Envision a sanctuary where community and sustainability are the cornerstones of living. In this haven, every family is able to grow their own food, children flourish through homeschooling tailored to unlock their full potential, and education extends beyond textbooks, instilling self-worth and a deep understanding of the world around them. Here, goodwill isn't just an ideal, it's the essence of daily life, where respect for law and order harmonizes with the community's resourcefulness. This place isn't just a dream, it's a call to action for everyone who believes in a better, more connected way of living. Join us in building a future where each individual's contributions create a tapestry of enduring harmony and prosperity. Join us in Ho Tapistan. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on where you are in the world. Welcome to the Griff Report, live Monday through Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern. I'm the host, Griff God. Hotep Jesus. Hotep Jesus. Hotep, Hotep, Hotep Jesus. Hotep, you're a genius. Hotepjesus.com. Oh, this is a real Hotep, brother. Hotep to the chat. Hotep to the Hotep of Stanis. Hotep. We got a special guest here today joining me. He's a MMA uh competitor, podcaster, coming out of Albuquerque. King Bow in the house. King Bow, did I say your name right? Indeed you did. King Bow, what's up, bro? Welcome, man. Welcome to the stream. How you feeling today, bro? Man, I feel like we got to get all these uh, potential controlled opposition uh, MF style, you know. I don't, can we curse? Can we curse? Oh, uh, yeah, we can curse. Yeah. Okay, we got to get these controlled opposition motherfuckers the fuck out of here. That's how I'm feeling. You know, I did, I did a live stream last night, you know, potentially getting James O'Keefe out of here. And if he, uh, I think he needs to respond to me and Stu Peters and Justin Leslie. So that's how I'm starting today. Damn, you coming in hot like that. Wait, hold on. What's the beef with James? Well, uh, James might have back in 2021 when Justin Leslie was working for him, um, hit a story about what was in the vaccines that was causing issues. And he dropped a documentary blowing the whistle on James called Project Whistleblower. So we did a live watch through of it last night. And all of the people, we had about, at one point in time, we had 5,000 people watching and everybody was blown away. Like the, it's, it's pretty damning information of Project Veritas, James O'Keefe, like they might be, potentially maybe, um, run by the CIA or the FBI. <laughs> Wait, who? <laughs> who might be run by the CIA or FBI? Maybe. Maybe. Who? Maybe might be Project Veritas, uh, James O'Keefe Media Group, and Mr. O'Keefe, potentially. And he admitted that he went to Bohemian Grove. So my whole thing, bro, is I want to have conversations out in the open. And I want to, I did the Jimmy Kimmel Challenge. I blew up for calling out Jimmy Kimmel in the ring and Hollywood and mainstream media for being, you know, pedophiles potentially might be maybe and uh, i think that we just need to have open conversations bro like we need to figure out who's who and we need to figure out who's for us and who's not wait what happened with jimmy kimmel um so i called him out after a fight um because long story short the only reason one of the big reasons i have a platform is because i i created what's called the greatest media heist and take over the 21st century i told the world that i had herpes after a fight mainstream media ran with it but I also said that I fought to eradicate childhood malnutrition. So all of mainstream media took the herpes story, but didn't tell the world that I fight to eradicate childhood malnutrition. Jimmy Kimmel was one of them. So after my next fight, I came back and I said, Jimmy, I fight to eradicate childhood malnutrition, viral this. And until you, they released the flight logs, you, Hollywood, and the mainstream media are pedophiles to me, essentially. And so that blew up the internet. I started something called the Jimmy Kimmel Challenge that got millions of views on TikTok. None of the videos are up there anymore because they took away all six of my accounts, hundreds of thousands of followers, would have millions of followers if they never banned me. Um, but the Jimmy Kimmel Challenge was me calling him out every single day for 46 days. And then I showed up at the Jimmy Kimmel Live studio and uh, essentially tried to have a conversation with him, but he did everything to avoid me. Damn. Did you actually yeah. see him? No, uh, we were out back just kind of like posing as uh, we, we have a video of it. We were out back and we were just kind of posing as like maybe media or something. And uh, the security, <laughs> the security knew who I was. Mm. So yeah, it, it wasn't, it wasn't a go. Okay. Um, 
What league you fighting? So, uh, Gamebred Bare Knuckle MMA. I'm partnered with George Masvidal, and uh, it's his new Bare Knuckle MMA league. So, it's the first, like, kind of mainstream Bare Knuckle MMA league. And uh, I will be the first middleweight world champion. Oh, so you're training to fight now, uh, yeah. bare knuckle. Yeah. I what? mean, ultimately, the goal is to be, you know, the biggest fighter on the planet. Um, because when I'm the biggest fighter in the world, I have the platform to essentially be able to tell everybody about my company's food technology. When we get 3 million people on this product line, we'll effectively eradicate childhood malnutrition what from is the that? planet. This is called Aloe Vea, A Love A, A Love A dot com. You can use the promo code Save Kids. Pretty much what we do is food technology that biohacks the body. So this is called Focus Plus. It's a nootropic that has a stem cell technology in it. So as you're drinking it, it's turning on the brain. It's all food. There's no artificial flavors or sweeteners or sugars like fucking Prime with sucralose in it. Stop drinking that shit. Um, this is all food technology. So we take. Um, food and we make technology out of it so one of the technologies that we have is called limitless limitless is an all-natural anti-inflammatory derived from betalin betalin is found in beets it's the anti-inflammatory property found in beets but betalin is attached to the sugar molecule so we have to use actual science to extract the betalin from the sugar molecule we put it in capsule form so one capsule is 500 beets worth of betalin which lowers the anti-inflammatory markers in a human by 47 percent at a cellular level in 90 minutes so imagine Imagine we have something that could ch save the world. And every time you take the product, you send that same nutrition, that same food technology to a child in need. We've sent over 50 million servings of nutrition that have been saving lives to children um, the last three and a half years. So what do you mean? You send some of that product to children? Yeah. So it's called Ace Manon. Ace Manon. If you go to the pinned, uh, my pinned video on top of my Twitter, I'm sitting down with CEO Sam Castor. Sam Castor is the one that started this um, idea in this company, this buy one nurse too. He built a very, very successful company in the early 2000s off this Ace Manon technology. And what's crazy is nobody has heard about, about it, but it's the world's most naturally researched molecule today. What Ace Manon does, like I said, is it turns on the body's immune system better than anything else from one ingredient found in what's called the aloe vera plant. And it's called Ace Manon. It's a long chain polysaccharide. So what it does in the human body, ours, increases stem cell production naturally by 300 to 400 percent. So what he started doing in the early two, um, in the early 90s, 2000s, when he built this billion dollar company, um, he started donating it to orphanages because he knew that all these children, the number one killer of children worldwide is malnutrition. So what he started to do is he started to donate this technology to orphanages that were losing like 40 kids a year, like one in Romania. After one year of donating this technology, no child died. So he goes, oh my gosh, I can take business now and actually save children, which is what he wants to do. Well, he went back to his shareholders. They told him, you know, he wanted to do a buy one nurse two model or you know, every time you buy a product, we nourish a child like Tom Shoes. And they wouldn't go because they were very, very profitable. So he left that company and then found ours. And the scientist that he actually made that very successful company with came back to him and said, you're never going to guess what? Um, found a way to make and extract Ace Manon to make it four times more bioavailable than what you had at Manatech. And uh, it's, it's, it's crazy. He's like, what are you going to do with it? He said, I don't know. He said, you're going to let me have it, and I'm going to use it to save the world's children. And that's when he partnered with our company with the all-natural anti-inflammatory. And now we have the most powerful food technology on the planet. And when we get 3 million people on this product line, we will effectively eradicate childhood malnutrition from the planet. And then that's why I fight. I fight because this company saved my life, and I wanted to tell other fighters about it because I was told I'd never compete again from a head injury. And after two, I was out for three and a half months, couldn't read, couldn't do fucking jack shit. There's a lot of people that have suffered from what I've suffered from, especially in football, especially especially in fighting, especially in all these other, you know, all these other sports. And within two and a half weeks, I was medically cleared to wrestle. And I was at the number one team in the nation at the University of Minnesota, where we have some of the best doctors in the world. So, um, yeah, that's why I fight. Nah, that's dope. So what's your uh, style? Is it wrestling? Do you have a wrestling base or? Um, so my coach is one of the best coaches in the world. Mike Winklejohn, trained GSB, John Jones, Greg Jackson. They know that I am one of the best wrestlers on the planet, but I have a thing where it's like I don't use it because 
you know, nobody won, nobody wants to see it. Two, if I use it, people will complain about it and call me a boring fighter. And three, I'm really nasty on my feet. I feel like I'm one of the best fighters in the world on my feet. Um, so it's like a free flow. Bruce Lee was my idol growing up. And I'm kind of like, you know, the samurai. I worshiped the samurai growing up. And they believe that you charged headfirst into the enemy. So that's kind of like, you know, I just move forward and try to knock you out. Okay, that's dope. So with this fight you got coming up, um, is there going to be, uh, is this like traditional MMA or is it going to be all stand up? So April 14th, April 13th, I'll be fighting for, or ha I have a match at Subversive mm -hmm. against Jake Babian. He's a Jake Paul nut licker. Um, so it's perfect. Uh, I'll get to uh, submit him and, you know, beat his ass and then call out Jake Paul for all the bullshit that he's been doing lately, like fighting Mike Tyson. Like, please stop. Who you got, who you got in that fight? Oh, fucking, I hope, Mike is, I want to believe, based off of all the training footage that I've seen of Mike Tyson, that he fucks Jake Paul up. Mm. Hopefully it can be a Cinderella story for Mike. Um, Jake is obviously younger, and, you know, I don't know. What are your Foreman, predictions? Uh, that's, your, that's what you're hoping, but what are your predictions? Uh, fuck, I don't know. I think it's going to be a pity pat bullshit fucking, oh, he's going to jab him high, jab him low, and keep him at distance and fucking run around and try to not get killed. And then he's going to win a stupid fucking s s decision. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a, that, that was my uh, yeah. animation. Yeah. Yeah, Hopefully. he's going to jab, jab, jab. He's got the height. He's got the reach. Yeah. Dance around for 30 minutes, and then the fight's over, and he wins, and... Yeah. Mike Nothing Mike wins that. because Mike, you know, doesn't get knocked out. Yeah. Well, let's hope none of that happens. Yeah. Um Yeah, I uh I'm a big fan of Mike and uh I hope to see Mike win. But I am terrified. I am terrified because if I see <laughs> if if I see Mike even about to go, I'm just gonna turn the TV off before I see him hit the mat. I'm not yeah. logging into Twitter for two weeks because I don't wanna see no clips. No, I know. I know, especially if it's Jake Paul, man, like, yeah, it, especially that. I mean, you got to think about it this way, like as an MMA fighter, it's been so it's been so it pissed me off so much to watch him even fight like Anderson Silva, like Anderson Silva was my one of my favorite fighters growing up, you know, and I wouldn't have taken that fight now or back when he took it. You know what I mean? I would have never even Israel Adesanya. I don't respect him either. Like. I would have never taken the fight against Anderson Silva. Why? why? Because he's not in his fucking prime. Oh, yeah. He's not in his prime. Like, why fucking do it? You know what I mean? I want. I would want him at his best, right? I would want him when he was fucking fighting Kale Sonnen and, you know, walking through everybody. I don't want to fight him when he's 40. Yeah. Like, that's stupid. You have so many other people that you could fight, and you want to waste a win on that. You're a fucking douchebag. To me. <laughs> to me. To me. That's what? me. Why you don't like Izzy? Well, I mean, he's part of my competition. Like, I feel like there's a lot of people that have platforms and don't use them for good mm. or as good as they, you know, as good as they could. And Israel has fought a lot of people, but he's not fought me. And I believe I'm the best in the world that nobody knows about yet. You know, I have the best coaches in the world telling me that. I have a lot of people, you know, in the MMA community who know I haven't even touched my full potential yet. Mm -hmm. And yet I've made a lot of the fights that I've had look easy. Um, and it, it, and I'm competing at a very, very high level, but I'm not really even trying, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, how good am I? What's the ceiling? And when I came to Jackson Wink MMA with coach Greg Jackson and Mike Winklejohn, first day I looked at him and I said, I will be the first four-time world champion in the UFC. I will win 185, I will drop down to 170, then I'll go up to 205, and then I'll fight John Jones at heavy, heavyweight. That was my goal. That was my goal. And then I will get out as the number one fighter of all time, and I will be the reason that no child dies from malnutrition any longer. So why didn't that happen? Well, I mean, I'm still fighting. Oh, okay. I'm still, I've, only been, I've only been fighting for, I think, how many years professionally? Like three or four years professionally? We lost oh. two years. So you haven't had your first UFC match yet? No, we've oh. lost. I mean, everybody's been calling for. I'm the most viral fighter on the planet that is not in a major organization. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. So you got you got a fight coming up. Whose ass whose ass have you kicked already? Um I don't like to I don't like to say it. I don't like to see that's the thing. Like I'm very respectful well, of my well, opponent. Then what's your what's your record? Uh we are what, eight eight 
or nine and three, nine and three, I believe. Okay, so who kicked your ass? Nobody's kicked my ass, actually. Nobody's so, kicked my ass. So, so with the distance. So if you even watch like my last fight, for instance, I fought a guy named Curtis Millender. He's a he's a legend, especially kind of like in the in the in the MMA community. He's fought, you know, some of the greats in the UFC. He knocked out Tiago Alves with a vicious knee. I fought him when he was on a four fight win streak. He was supposed to retire at the end of the year last year. He was talking all this shit to me, uh, saying how it was going to be an easy fight, all this shit. If you look at the fight afterwards, my face is completely fine. I'm barely breathing hard. I am sitting there like thinking I won the fight and then it goes the other way and all the comments are what the fuck King Bao won that fight. Mm. So if I get touched by a guy who's known for, for let's just say touching people, kind of like Joe Biden, if I get, if, you know what I mean? If I, if I can sit there and fight with a, one of the, one of the best in the world on standup um, and not get touched what does that say? And there was a point in time where I had him down and I was beating the fuck out of him and he turned his head to the referee and it, he made it look like I hit him in the back of the head. So the referee stood us back up, but mm. I had three minutes to work. If he didn't do that. And afterwards, after the fight, fuck you, Curtis, after the fight, he comes up to me and he goes, Oh yeah, you had me, bro. You should have never let me talk to the fucking referee. You should have never you, bro. I wasn't getting up. You have my wrist. I, like you're the strongest person I've ever met. Like you should have never let me talk to the referee. You didn't hit me in the back of the head fuck you curtis so yeah that uh you know it's stuff like that and then you mm. know i lost another fight early on uh when i was three and oh i took a guy on who's 11 who was 11 and oh so i was three and oh he was 11 and oh and i moved up a weight class on two weeks notice that was my first loss that i i was winning the entire fight on the feet i took him down he won every fight by submission and i just was you know kind of like hitting him and whatever i didn't pass i was young and i was cocky and he got me in a triangle choke. Mm. And he's uh that was Jordan Young. He's he actually died a couple of years ago. So rest in peace to Jordan Young. Um, but he was an up and coming talent too. So I've never got my ass kicked. Nobody's ever kicked my I would I would love that. I would love to lose bad. <laughs> I would love to lose bad because that means I'm pushing myself in who I'm fighting. Mm. But I get to be pushed like that. So So what's your training would, look like? Um, every day, every day, Monday through Friday, I try to do something light Monday through Saturday. So today would be ground and pound. Uh, tomorrow is big glove sparring. How long is ground and pound? Is it two hours, three hours? Um, yeah. So it's, it goes about an hour and a half. Okay. Yep. Um, then sparring Tuesdays and Thursdays, big glove sparring on Tuesday, Wednesdays, wrestling Thursday, small glove sparring. Friday is kind of like a freestyle day. You can just you know, do what you want with whoever. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and any weight training involved in that week and you know, what else goes all into this? Body weight. I'm uh -huh. all body weight. I do all, all body, body weight. weight. Yeah. All body weight outside of like my maces and my, like it's called a parabol. Mm -hmm. So like this thing, here's a, here's a plug functional patterns. You're, you're welcome. This is called a parabol. You swing it. Right. And then you can slam it. Right. Mm. Yeah. That thing is like a damn medieval weapon. It is. It is Jesus indeed. Christmas. Yes. Okay. Dope. Well, you know, um, you know, good luck on your next fight. Appreciate you, my um, friend. Where do we watch that? Um, you can watch it at Subversive. S U B S E R S I V. Mm -hmm. Subversive. It's the number one combat jujitsu um platform pretty much in the world. Mm -hmm. Me and my team will be competing to win the championship belt and um uh, I'm starting to take over for jujitsu, so it's gonna be wonderful. You don't play chess, do you? I love chess. Do I you? love corridor. I love corridor more. I love corridor more, but chess is I love chess. What's your chess elo? I don't even know. Okay. I'm I'm not I'm You're not, not that like, deep into it. You enjoy the game, but you're not deep into the Okay. Sure. I'm I'll a chess anybody. geek, so. Really? Yeah. I was asking yep. you because I know they have like chess and fighting now. They call it chess boxing, where like you 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 play chess for a certain amount of time, then you do a round, then you come back to the chess board and you do That's a round. Hard. That's super cool. That's super cool. How do you win? Do you win on the chessboard or in the fight? I think you get judged for both or fight. wherever you get knocked out first. I forget how it goes. Or or do they play the match and then box? I forget how. I don't I don't I haven't seen one, but I know they do this. I know it's a thing. I'm going to look it up. That's awesome, man. Yeah. It's going to be super dope. I think that's a a new thing coming up with uh some of the influencers. Um yeah. 
So, um, first of all, I want to come back. I want to come back to um, the Kool Aid on your desk. It looked like red Kool Aid, bro, on, <laughs> on the desk. Hold that up again. <laughs> it's pretty much Kool Aid. Yes. That's it right there. Yeah. No, I'll show you. Hold up. Hold up. Let me I see. Let you. me see this stuff, man. On Focus Plus. This is what it looks like. So it's an immune activating drink. So you're drinking that Ace Man and that I told you about. Okay. So this is what it looks like. Aloe vea, A love A, A love is in the middle, mm -hmm. right? Love is in the middle of everything. Oh, I like that. That, yep. And then this is that all natural anti inflammatory that I told you about. This is called Limitless. Mm -hmm. And so this is what it looks like. These are those betalin pills. And so it's like some people say, well, is that beetroot powder? And no. what is it? What is it? What are the benefits of that one? You said it, I know it has stem cell regeneration. Yep. So it lowers the inflammatory markers at a cellular level in a human by 47%. Okay. So this is anti-inflammatory. Imagine. So imagine um, not being sore after you work out. Right. Imagine being able to recover five to six times as fast. Mm. Bro, it's great. I have a picture that I always show when I go live or when I'm talking about it. After a fight, I couldn't close my hand because I, I hit him like wrong. And my hand was swollen. Mm. I took six limitless um, that night. And like, I was complaining to everybody at, at the hotel. And the next morning, all the swelling is gone. Wow. All the swelling is gone after taking six of these bad boys. Dang. So again, instead of taking Tylenol and ibuprofen and all that bullshit that you're taking that causes stomach ulcers, take food technology that has one ingredient in it. And every time you take it, you send this life-saving technology to a child in need and once we get three million people on this product line we'll effectively eradicate childhood malnutrition from globe mm. drink something that activates your brain instead of slows it down why are let you let me drinking see the it? packaging for that one for the drink how does that yes. taste i wonder how that tastes phenomenal it's everything that we do tastes phenomenal because you won't take it if it doesn't and that's the uh noatropic yep that's the yep exactly yeah yep. that's dope that's dope we got a noatropic too maybe we should collab man i got a noatropic out flow fire dope I I was is a hundred percent herbal, Love um, it. but yeah, I think more people need to be on that stuff, man. More people need nootropics in their life, man. Yeah, because they're dumbing us down through the food and through the chemicals that they spray in the fucking air. Like, if you're not biohacking right now, you're behind. Yeah, and you have to take control of your health. And if you don't take control of your health, then they're gonna control it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you see what they do when they have control. Mm -hmm. We've all seen what they do. So, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, okay, so recently in the news, they said that uh, Jesus is king is anti-Semitic. Have you seen that headline? Yeah, I said that. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Who said that Jesus is king is anti-Semitic? Jeremy Boring. Okay, well, is Jeremy sounds boring, okay? <laughs> he sounds retarded. He sounds dumb. So... Let's be honest, who's saying that? Nobody who's Christian is saying that Christ is king is anti-Semitic. There's only one, there's probably only one type of person that's saying that. That's all I'm saying, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong what with if, those. What if, what if, let's say you're a Jewish person, right? And, mm -hmm. um, you know, you you obviously do not affirm that, um, Jesus is king, right? That's that's what their belief system is. They believe that he was a regular man. He's not the Messiah. What what is it anti-Semitic if I reply to you and say Jesus is king? Fuck no. Because it's it's directed, it's directed towards a Jewish person. Hey, Hotep, you and I are what we consider um, maybe Moors or African American or African, right? Mm -hmm. Do we have bigger noses? The majority of people? Yeah. Do we have bigger lips? Are we yeah. better kissers? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So it just is what it is, bro. It is what it is. Am I going to take offense for that? Am I going to take offense for saying, oh, he a big nose, big lip, big dick nigga? No, I'm not going to get offended by that. No. Truth is truth. So if truth is truth and people believe that Christ is king and that's their truth, yeah. then let them have their truth. If you can suck child bloody baby dick, then, like, bro, then let us have our own beliefs. Like, if you can believe that that's an okay thing, I think other people can believe that Christ is king and it's not a bad thing. I don't know. That's just my take on it. 
That's my take on it. Just leave people alone if they're not hurting people. Like, if you're not hurting kids and you're not fucking them, do whatever you want. Be gay, be transgendered, do whatever. Just leave people alone. But, but like, to me, I wouldn't suck bloody baby dick. That's not what I would do. <laughs> let, let, me read the, let me read the tweet here, and you can tell me your response to this, right? It says, the same way anything becomes anti-Semitic when it is used for the purpose of expressing anti-Semitism. It's like asking, how does a shovel become a murder weapon when it is used to murder someone? This isn't hard. A shovel is not innately a murder weapon. Um, saying Christ is king is not innately anti-Semitic. It's about how the thing is used. Saying eat some cornbread is not racist if I say it to my three-year-old when she is refusing her dinner. If I say it uh, to a black person, then it could be uh, deemed racist, right? And so then he says... Uh, Additionally, saying Christ is king for an evil purpose, like using it as a weapon to express your hatred or disdain for Jews, is a grave sin. It plainly violates the third commandment, thou shalt not carry forth the name of the Lord thy God in vain. I mean, guys, they're just trying to divide and conquer. This has been happening for years. It's been happening for years. It started with Black Lives Matter when I was up in Minnesota during the George Floyd riots, and I knew that the George Floyd death was going to be used to essentially start communism. I'm not retarded. See, I know history. A lot of people don't know history. So if you don't know history, this is called Marxism. Black Lives Matter was a Marxism group. All of this is for communism. Divide and conquer, get people to hate each other so that we don't come together and we get fucked up by an out outer worldly threat or something like that. Okay, and then we don't know what's going to happen. Who gives a shit if you're Jewish? Who gives a shit if you're Christian? Who gives a shit if you're Muslim? Believe what you believe and leave people alone and be at peace. We're supposed to activate the love in our hearts, unconditional love. I believe that unconditional love is Christ consciousness. Unconditional love is what allows you to forgive. It is what allows you to ascend from this realm and see everybody as equal. So if we can all just do that, maybe then we would stop talking about what doesn't fucking matter, like race, religion, and skin color. We would just focus on the activity of love and how we could better our communities. And I think that people like this guy are a perfect plant, just like James O'Keefe might be, and is being used to just push a narrative to divide and bring hate to the world. And fuck you, Mr. Boring. Um, I want to come back to that. Uh, you said a couple of triggering things there, specifically communism, um, which uh, I'm somewhat of a fan of. Um, but I'm also a fan of fascism, so take that with a grain of salt. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just want to make sure we get a couple of things clear as far as James O'Keefe is concerned. Yes. You watched the doc. You guys did a watch party. What is the most damning thing? To me, what I heard you say was um, in regard to the uh, vaccination, he was pushing yep. the jabby jab. No. So what happened is he Justin Leslie was the guy that broke the Pfizer story uh, with the guy talking about um, he was the light skinned motherfucker that was like um, evolution. Uh, what is it called? Like predictive evolution or like they're. Okay. You're talking about the uh, it was Project Veritas' biggest story, right? So he broke that for them. Um, and he also in 2021 brought vials of the vaccine to James and some other people who ended up looking at it in a microscope and then taking blood and seeing what it did to the blood back in 2021 and it immediately coagulated. So they had information about whatever they were seeing that they knew wasn't good that they end up tucking and the reason why they tucked it is because supposedly it went against journalistic um journalistic integrity or like they could get sued or fined for it but they knew by giving him the gear that they did that they were already breaking the law so it's like they did that to sh ultimately it looks like shelve the story so that this never got out. And if that information would have got out back in 2021 and they blew the whistle on it, there's a lot of people that probably wouldn't have taken the you know what. So it's like it's pretty but he broke the law. Well, that's what they that's what they said, but hear me out. They've been breaking the law on a lot of things. You understand? Like so okay, you're saying that they were kind of selective with when they wanted to expose the fact that they are breaking the law. Bingo. And he and he lays it out brilliantly like this isn't uh, they've been very interesting how this is one of the only things that Mr. O'Keefe or these people haven't responded to. Like me, bro, I'm all about clearing my name. If there's an issue with me, come to me. 
we'll have an open conversation about it, bro. I'll do it in five. I'm very open. You can see I have no filter. I give no fucks. I say it how I believe it is, right? I think that's what we should do. Let's have an open discussion and see where we can agree to disagree. And then let's be men and walk away. That mm -hmm. is what we are supposed to do. That's why they censor and suppress because they don't want us having open dialogue. Mm -hmm. That's the point. So my whole thing is, just like I was trying to have an open conversation with Jimmy Kimmel, let's have an open conversation, Mr. O'Keefe, and be like, hey, why do you know who Justin Leslie is? I know you do. I know you do. Because you talked on the phone and told him that you went to Bohemian Grove and you were asking if he was mad at you for it. So, like, if there's things that just don't add up. Now, let's stop I, right there. Yeah. Um, I don't think he said he went to Bohemian Grove. He said he went to a Bohemian club. Those are okay. two different things, right? Fair enough. Is it? Well, I don't know. It do, hear me out, bro. It doesn't appear to be because the sentiment of the phone call was checking up on Justin as to whether or not he was upset because some of his staff was upset that he went. And I don't know a bohemian club that you would go to that would upset the people that work for you. I don't know of any uh, one other than maybe one where they potentially do mock sacrifices of children mm. in front of a fucker. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. I just think the conversation needs to be had, bro. That's all I'm saying. I'm not trying to hear, sit here and be like, James O'Keefe is this, James O'Keefe is this. I'm saying as a truther community, which you are a part of, all I want to do, just like I'm having a conversation with you, let's open the dialogue to, let's open the floodgates of dialogue to everyone mm -hmm. because we all deserve that. I think now by having a conversation with you, I can respect you more now. Hopefully you can respect me more now that we actually have a conversation and get to see where we think. We both agree on nootropics. We both agree you you think that communism good. I think that communism is good if I'm in charge. <laughs> well, that, that's that, well, I, I don't believe communism is good. I believe communism is good if I'm in charge. So we're like on the same page. Bingo. With that. Bingo. <laughs> exactly. So that's the point, right? So we can all find ways to agree. And I just think we need to have open conversations, especially with those who are respected in what we do. I have built my platform organically while shadow banned while censored and suppressed, hmm. hoping that I could get a platform like James O'Keefe. If I was never shadow banned or censored off of TikTok, I'd have millions of followers, followers right now. And I could direct conversation and narrative in the public square differently than what I can now. I have a lot of fans and I'm super grateful for you all. Truly, I'm honored by you. But imagine the power that we would have if we had a following like Dom Lucre or a James O'Keefe. And we could start being like, hey, James, what's this over here? Let's Wait, why'd you throw Dom Lucre in the same bucket as James? I'm not throwing Dom in, in, in oh, the same. Okay. I'm okay. just saying, I'm saying if we had the, the, that the type of following. Bingo, right? I've I've gotten censored and suppressed and shadow banned, and I think that's why I don't have that platform. And I'm saying if more people weren't, if the suppression monster was never used against me, well, then I could probably have a conversation with James O'Keefe and be like, hey, man, let's, let's clear the air. Let's just clear the air. I want to like you. I want to love you. I just shared a video of his four days ago, bro, before I saw this. Mm. You know what I mean? I just shared a video praising him, mm. being like, this is how we should think. He was talking about how I can't have friends or people around me that aren't willing to lose their life for this shit. Mm. My circle is so small, bro, and it's because I can't fuck around with people who aren't willing to fuck around and find out. I will find out at the highest level. I give no fucks. Mm. Who's, who's the pedophiles in Hollywood? I want to know. <laughs> I want to have that conversation. Who, who was Jepstein's client, uh, Jeffrey Epstein's client list? Who was that? We need to know. Why, uh, why did that come out in January and we still don't know? Mm. Why? Who's directing the conversation or what's happening behind the scenes? We, as a people, deserve to know. Yeah. So that's so, all I feel. So there's a conflict happening in the Middle East. Um, I guess there's three takes, right? One of them is uh, none of my business. Another one is, you know, viva la Palestine. And the other one's uh, viva la Israel. Where, where, where are you laying on, on that? Do you support Palestine, Israel? Well, I don't think you support Israel by the way you're speaking on this interview. But are you a Palestine or you're a, I don't really give a shit guy? Watch, there are a lot of good people, I'm sure, who are in Israel who want nothing to do with this war. I'm sure that there are some people in Palestine who want nothing to do with this war, and all they want to do is love and be with their family. They want to provide for their family. They want to have the opportunity and potential and, and the possibility to be able to give opportunities to their children. That's all they want to do. So they're like me. 
They're like me. Bro, I've walked away from every fight that I've ever had outside of the cage. Walked away from it. I've had people spit in my face, loogies rolling down my face, all while knowing I could end that person. That shows real strength. Having the, the ability to do something, being a samurai in the garden and not ending people, that shows real strength. So for me, it's like when you're bombing innocent women and children who have nothing to do with war and wartime, then I don't know. To me, that's a Satanist behavior. Mm. To me, the military industrial complex, to me, is run by Satanist pedophile fucks. Mm. That's my conspiracy. My conspiracy is that everybody at the highest level are Satanist pedophile fucks. Why, how, 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 why do I think that? Well, Liz Crokeland did, did an amazing documentary you know, called Out of Shadows, where they expose there's people in the CIA and the military industrial complex and people in Heli Weird that are in dark suits who are Satanists at the highest level and they control potentially might be the military industrial complex. So I think about that and I think about who would want to bomb innocent women and children? I don't, I'm not using the Jew term. I don't use the Jew term. I don't use Israel Jews. No, I think, I think it's potential Canaanites, Khazarians, whatever, who worship Satan. Why would you want to bomb innocent women and children for land? Who gives a shit? There's land everywhere. Because this land is holy in the book that you have to believe in for you to believe in this religion. I believe in unconditional love. I believe that when we activate our heart space, and we learn how to become consciously aware that we create our reality and we can do everything in love, we're following all of the highest examples, whether it be Buddha, Jesus, um, Muhammad, Allah, what, that is the highest, that's where we need to be living our lives from. And then when we all realize that, we can all leave each other the fuck alone and live in peace, hopefully. Mm. Well, retarded. Um, well said, well said. Some of that stuff you said I'm gonna have to condemn. I don't know this nigga YouTube. <laughs> I'm not on YouTube. I got kicked the fuck out of YouTube. I was, I was after Alex Jones and David Ike. They got me the fuck out of here. Are you, what do you mean, Alex? What, you you did a stream with them? When David Ike first got deplatformed and Alex Jones first got deplatformed, I was like three months behind them for vaccine misinformation because I was telling everybody about the lipid nanoparticles and the, oh. um, the parades. That is now fucking verified to be in this shit. So it's like, oh, okay. yeah, they got me. The oh, they, they got you out of here during the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah, that. you couldn't talk about that shit then. You can barely <laughs> talk about it now. Right. Um, wow. Okay. Let's come back to communism now. You said, um, I can't remember exactly what you said, but you alluded to something that showed signs of communism emerging in the United States. What, what, are, you, what are you seeing that? or some of these uh, red flags or, or whatever that you believe that is uh, bringing in a communist. Yeah. So it was crazy. I was, I was, in, I'm from Minnesota. So me and Stu Peters, it's crazy how we are working together now because we didn't know each other four years ago. And we both started talking out four years ago during the time of the George Floyd riots, because I innately intuitively knew that the switch was being pulled. And I, if you go back on my Facebook, Joel Bauman, Joel R. Bauman or Joel Bauman now, you can go back three, four years ago and see the videos that I was doing during the George Floyd riots, starting to question the narrative. Why are all of these protests happening? Hey, wait a minute. Why are there bricks being laid out for people to, to, to use? I showed another video. I have another video on my Facebook of a police officer dressed in full riot gear going to the auto center while everybody else is protesting and starting to break the windows. And people are running up to him being like, hey, man, what are you doing? Why are you breaking the windows? And he's like, get out of my face. And then it shows he's an actual police officer. People do a side by side of his, his, of his face and they put his face up. Oh, and it was an actual police officer. So to me, bro, that tells me to me, potentially, that there might be a coup. What George Soros believes in open borders. They have literally been telling everybody what they are essentially doing. When I say communism, I mean New World Order 2030 agenda, because that's the ultimate form of communism and control. They're taking China's essentially blueprint and saying, okay, let's install cameras everywhere. Look at all the cameras in fucking Walmart that have popped up. Or look at all the cameras that you now see everywhere. Facial recognition, you can now pay with your hand. They have been slowly dog walking, this, uh, dog walking us in a communist AI dick. That's what's been happening. And they're trying to fuck us all with it. So I, since for the last four years, have been going as a black man who got ridiculed 
who got ridiculed for speaking out against Black Lives Matter. I'm like, I don't, what has Black Lives Matter done? They destroyed my favorite city. I lived in Minneapolis, St. Paul for eight years, bro. I lived there. I went to college there. I love that city. It's a beautiful city. Now it's struggling. What place that the riots happened got better? None of them. Where did the money go? Nowhere. The leaders even said, hey, we're communists and Marxists. If you're not retarded and you haven't seen the deadliest virus, you need to, everybody needs to see that. Doc, I was sharing that documentary three years ago where they talk about how they use and they pit people against each other. And that's how communism starts. Carl, communist manifesto, Karl Marx. Like it's all in there. And all these people say this pedophile fucks so i think communism is actually a ploy of these satanist pedophile fucks because they know how to destroy humanity and take control and that's what they want that's what satan would want mm. so yeah. what when did you get hip to the you know black lives matter shim sham Im immediately i knew it was bullshit so like I knew what 2015 because hear me out they tried to do a race war in Minneapolis. We were the epicenter, bro. The KKK then everybody from Minnesota, you know what I'm talking about. In Minnesota, when this shit popped off, bro, there were live streams every night after George Floyd's riots of everything happening at once. It was crazy. Like if there was a fire or a protest going on, people would be over there with their cameras and you could live stream this live stream over here. The KKK and the and the and Black Lives Matter and some of the gangsters up in North Minneapolis were having shootouts, right? To me, I think my opinion is George Soros sent both Black Lives Matter and the KKK and Antifa and all these motherfuckers in and just said cause havoc. That's what I believe. Why? Mm. Because it destabilized our fucking city. We disbanded the police and nothing good has happened from it. There were shootings every fucking week. Somebody just got murked last week in, in Minneapolis. I mean, a bunch of people got murked, but a, a 18 year old boy just got murked at the, by the, I think it was the subway station. Like there's there's just so many things that have happened because of lawlessness. You need righteous order. We don't need everybody's like okay, we need police. I believe we need righteous order. Look, here's how I would handle everything. This is how I would handle everything. If you steal, fuck jail. Fuck jail. Why why go to jail? Let's just take your hand and hit it with a hammer real quick in front of everybody. We're going to say, "Hey, this guy stole that's it. He stole, you know, he took from these people, you know, we warned him the first time he did it again. So in front of everybody, let's just take him. Hey, you knew you stole, right? Yeah, I know I stole. Okay, we're just going to take a big rubber hammer one time, put, it, put your hand out. Boom. Right? If we break the hand, we break it. Okay, but a broken hand is better than being in a, in a place full of savages. We used to spank children. Right? That yeah. did you get spanked? Did you get spanked? Yeah. Okay, same. I think I turned out really good compared to the Where children. Where your family from? You, you got a little island African look to you. No, nah, I'm from. So I was adopted. I grew up adopted. My mother gave me life. Um, I have. Uh, she chose the parents that I have to raise me. So I grew up what in bumfuck. I grew up in bumfuck Minnesota, out in the middle of nowhere. So that's another reason why I have the mentality that I do. I think that these children they need to be they need to have discipline in their lives whether mm -hmm. that's a sport whether that's someone that they look up to you know i feel like when there is healthy discipline there is healthy discipline we don't do it healthily we use the courts to essentially enslave people when we don't have to do that and i think that there's many other ways that we can do that. and i also think like cutting off someone's hand for stealing is extreme so let's meet in the middle you know what <laughs> i mean let's meet in the middle rubber hammer there you go uh, reparations for black people. Where do you stand on that one? Oh, fuck out of here. We're royalty. We're the ones that created this technological system. We're the fucking Egyptians. We are the Moors. We're the ones that actually started all this shit. So we need to stop being fucking victims and saying, oh, we can, we need to get old for slavery. We put ourselves in slavery, you stupid motherfuckers. We're the one that sold ourselves off. So if you knew history, you would know that and you would start to act like a royal that you are. And you would start to believe in yourself and go, I'm royalty. I'm a royalty. Why would I ever need a handout? What can I create? Bro, you built a platform creating. I have built a platform creating. We both do music. We both pro we, we both do dope music. How did we get there? We had to believe in ourselves enough to actually transmute the thoughts and the beliefs that we have and then create.
No fucking rebel. That's victim mentality. That's government handout mentality. And look what it's done to the black fucking community. Look what it's done. Look what child support has done. When, when black women can marry the government, they do, right? We've done this to ourselves. So we need to stop talking this reparation shit. That's why my name is King Bao. That's why my name is King Bao because I will get it myself. I will get it myself. Wait a second. I, wait a second. You said something a, a little bit controversial there. Let's go. Black people are the ancient Egyptians? Black people are the ancients of ancients. Yeah, absolutely. Why is it that we make music the way that we do? And when, when Mr. Hendrix or someone that's singing a soulful song, he can stop the entire room and everybody can what's called oscillate and entrain to the same frequency where everybody in unison is doing this saying, yes. Well, if the universe is mental, what's the most powerful thing that you can make someone say? Yes, that's inviting. Everybody wants to hear. What's the, what's the thing that everybody's afraid to hear most? No. Hmm. What's the thing that everybody is afraid to say most? No. So I believe that, yes, we are fucking magicians being able to make people do this shit. We're magicians making people feel a certain way, feel good around us when we're cracking jokes and we're laughing. Why do the women of today's world want to love us more than ever before? Because truth is becoming truth. Truth is truth. Are we not more athletic? Respectfully. I say this respectfully. Sound like a black nationalist, King Bao. You sound like a black supremacist. I love, hey, hey, if you knew how many white women I've been with, you wouldn't say that, okay? So, so let's just get that out of here. Let's just. <laughs> Wait I'm, a I'm, second. Wait a I'm second. Gonna, hold on, hold on, hold on. I love everyone. I love them all. We love them all. But I'm just saying, right, okay, everybody's holy and divine in their own way, right? Everybody's holy and divine. We just got the sauce. We got the sauce. That's all. That's um, all I'm saying. All right, let's talk about white women then, right? Because that's a popular topic on this channel. Um, let's do it. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, should black people procreate with white people or, or should we practice racial superiority? You said you did? Well, I did. I used to let it go, bro. I had no cares. I well, you got a white baby mama? Two. You got I, two I, white baby mamas. At two at the same time. Let's just say that. At the pinnacle of my career, <laughs> at the pinnacle of my career, I got two of them at the same time. All right? Yeah. Yeah, I was making a little bit of money, was feeling a little confident, wasn't really, you know, maybe uh, who I needed to be at the time, and we had five beautiful children in four years out of it. Okay? So put that two and two together. We did a lot of fun. Okay? Why, fun. why the white women and not a black woman? Well, because I grew up, I grew up in a white community. I was the only African American male in a small community of Norwegian. So just one, that's what was around. Mm. Two, I didn't necessarily understand black culture and was never really accepted by black culture. I mean, it's a perfect example. I just battled daylight. I just battled daylight like back in March, and a lot of people. He's the number one battle rapper in the world, arguably. And it's like the whole entire app black community and the whole entire hip hop community didn't want to accept me. You want to know why? Because of how I talked, or how I dressed or how I looked. When I went to college, I went to the University of Minnesota and I wrestled for the number one team in the nation. And I went from a small fucking farming community all the way to the big city, right? Two hours away. And the first thing I would hear from fucking black people is, nigga, you talk funny. Nigga, you talk funny. What do you mean? I don't have a, well, you got an accent. Nigga, you got an accent. What do you mean? I talk fucking perfect. That doesn't make any sense. You don't make any sense. What do you mean I have an accent? It would always, bro, it would always piss me off. Like, I would accept them, but they wouldn't this, accept Does me. it still piss you off? Yeah, it's still fucking, like, because you got even, a white accent, bro. <laughs> 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 if we had a conversation over the phone, I'd be like, who this white boy I just got off the phone with? <laughs> Absolutely. But if I played you my music and I transform because it's all an act, bro, it's all a fucking act. If I transform, all of a sudden I'm King Bao and it's, hey, yo, you know what I mean? Then it's yeah. like, oh. It would, he, it would be fake. It would be fake. I wouldn't I wouldn't like that. Like if I heard you talk and then you went to hip hop and changed, I'd be like, nah, that's not cool. I want to hear him sound how he normally sounds. Hear me out and hear me out. I agree with you, but we all have ways of transforming of transforming. Meaning, here's what I mean by that. When you're with a girl and you're trying to seduce her, do you not transform? Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. So if you listen to some of my love songs, I wouldn't be talking like this. I would be talking with a little bit more. Huh? I would be talking more with a little bit more, but it probably isn't this voice, right? Yeah. I could, bro, this is me animated. My real nature is nonchalant. I don't give a fuck. Right. This is who I actually... I'm on a podcast. I got to be entertaining. You have an audience who doesn't know who the fuck I am. So now I got to transform and I got to be like, bro, but if I, if it was actually me, I would be sitting here with a fucking joint. It's fucking morning. <laughs> I woke up. I literally messaged you. And I just said, I just got up. Yeah. I had to do all my rituals, take all my fucking products. Right. Yeah. And do what I needed to do. Get the incense burning, which I haven't even fucking done yet. Right. Like I got to do my morning rituals, but that's transforming. So again, I, I don't like that argument because at the end of the day, we all transform for yeah. whatever it is that we desire. Absolutely. Yeah, so you transform in front of kids. I transform when I'm pulled over by the police. Absolutely. There's a lot of transforming that happens. I, so I transform why, on then, Fox. Yeah. So why then can't I transform into, hey, yo, I will damage you. Open my mouth and let the cannon loose. Pure cancer in the box. <laughs> That's a tanning booth. Commanding troops of use from African roots. Known to shoot, drop, or kill. Any man when he moves. Blood diamond. Ruthless. Horror core. Horror to the core. I'll snatch your soul from your body and smash it in a door. I'm disaster after war. My laugh is for the gall. I'm a punch slice slicing deep like I'm a master with the swords. I'm a grave digger. Watch my rage get thicker. Lines will leave my foes unconscious like some laced up liquor. Pace is quicker. Blessed with the spring of a steed. I ate half my mom's stomach when my parents conceived i'm a soldier from the dead i'll throw a boulder down a ledge watch it rush down to a village crushing shoulders arms and head my heart is colder than lead if you want to test my style get a sword for a pen because i spit flames walk in the club and lick dames then sniff can go crazy and slap a bitch like rick james like what are we talking about <laughs> what are we talking about so can i be confident or not can i be confident or not can i transform or not no oh it's corny shut the fuck up <laughs> Oh, uh, shit. That was Damn. Great. That I was can't remember great. the last time we had a freestyle on this channel. Oh, this is a real hotel, brother. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. got now I got to go check out you and Daylight Battle. I love battle rap. That's awesome. Somebody in the chat said, This white man spitting. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fire. Thank you. My chat is disrespectful, man. They are no, something. Man, but hear me, hear me out. So I have a group called the Undeniables. Okay. And we are the Undeniables. We are the greatest group of all time. And I'm saying this flat out. I have King Bow Radio. So whenever I go live, it's King Bow Radio now. And I play my own shit because no one else will. And on King Bow Radio, everybody for the last week has been hearing the Undeniables music. And we are undeniable. There is nothing that anybody can say on this chat that will refute my group being the best. We were fucking poor when we got together. All of us were struggling. All of us were broke. Nobody wanted to believe in us. We were the black sheep. I was always laughed at because I'm white because I'm all this shit. Now nobody can deny our music, bro. Mm. Nobody can deny our music and we're called the Undeniables and we're about to take over all of music. We don't fuck kids. We never had to sell our soul or our butthole to get to where we are. I made it without Helly Weird, P Diddy, and my soul and butthole intact. Hashtag no soul or butthole. I really do this, and I'm willing to tell people I do this. So much to the point where, hey, hey, this way. This is the. Uh, can I? Can I? Can I play something real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Give me, give me thirty seconds. This is called "Good Die Young," off of the Undeniable's new album, "Goat," greatest group of all time. We are the three goats, and we're come back to lead the sheep, to the promised land. Hopefully, we can hear it. Play it. Let me see. You should be able to hear them. No, right. no, I can't hear it because the cancellation. Send me the link and I'll play it on my side. Yes, I got you 100%. Send it to my DMs. I'm going to read some super chats really fast here while you yeah, send it. To me. You sent it? I'm going to do it right now. Okay. Um, Cassius Cam, thank you for the $5 super. Cassius Cam says, as the Hotep Nation combat expert, King Bao is a problem for everyone good luck to you on your journey to gold yeah cash is cam he's got a gym he trains he is Appreciate our in-house combat expert and if thank he you. says you a problem then you a problem thank you brother i gotta Appreciate defer you. to his expertise thank you um and we're gonna check out that fight I'm, I'm gonna be paying very close attention and um i just need a favor though yes of course it's one of the dreams i've always had okay yep one of my dreams was to come out 
to the ring Let's do it. as the entourage with a fighter. Of course, done. Consider it done. Whenever we can, uh, whenever you can link um, at any of my fights, I just sent it to you on Twitter. Okay. Um, yeah, bro, let's make it happen. I would Word. love that. So if I pop up, I could be in the entourage? Done, bro. I don't cap. I don't cap and I don't lie. I hope everybody from your audience realizes that I'm just, I just try to be authentic, bro. Yeah. Regardless of how it looks to anybody else, I've had to realize what authenticity is for me. And like, this was my biggest fear, speaking in front of people for the longest time or just being who I, wa I was, like behind the scenes. Who I am behind the scenes is who I am on camera. You know what I mean? And like, I just, I'm grateful for people accepting me now and uh, seeing it. So thank you for you, brother. Absolutely. Um. Okay, here it is. Good Die Young. Let's pull this up and I'm gonna play the record. All right, Watch. it's playing right now. Hold on. Watch. For anybody that says I can't rap or any of yeah. dumb shit, yeah. you're about to look retarded. Drake could never. King. I'll fuck Drake up. Drake up. I'll fuck Kanye West up in the beat battle. You heard it here first. Go. Go. So please don't tell me that the good die young for all the things I've yet to do and all the things I've done. So please don't tell me that the good die young. If legends never die, I believe I've come, yeah. Some think I am a dead man cause I won't keep my mouth shut. They only saying that because they scared and they about none. Listen up, I don't give a fuck. They try and put me down cause I live it up. I keep rising, that position stuck. I never pay attention if it isn't love. What's the benefit of notion if they didn't judge? Pride only feels good when it isn't love. When the world tried to shake you but you didn't budge. When they behind you now for what the mission was. When the disbelief is a pick me up. If you ain't here now then don't miss me, huh? Treat you like you did me, tell me give it up. Gave too many chances, they ain't give me none. Learn most don't go cause the reasons suck Insomnia, ain't dreaming none Clown world, that's illusory Big L's a beer dub Only move forward when the mirror's low Enlightenment when the fear's shine Been telling them but they ain't hearing none Ears to hear, eyes to see Even government's scared of try to me Learn ain't real if you have to try to be If you hate me, I'll let you lie to me Hip-hop is my diary Ascend of the clouds like the time is heat Big joint, I drag on mighty beast I'm a legend, didn't have to die to be I'm a legend, didn't have to die to be I can't even Sleep in bed, I think and dream of what you said. Feeling for the peace, I'm only decent of the mess. Even when you're speaking, we agree with me instead. I'm not the king, she wants to keep you. End up leaving me for dead. Family, turn it back on me, said I ain't gonna make it. I've been working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, y'all got it. Y'all got a sound. Yeah. Y'all got a sound. All right. Yeah, this shit official. This shit's official. We're about to take over everything. It sounds it's clean. It sounds very mm -hmm. clean. It sounds like you guys got a good engineer. It sounds like you guys yeah. got a good producer. Very. Two things that's really hard to come by. Mm -hmm. Um, Metastep, two dollar super chat. He says, uh, can you ask bro if he knows Nate Baker? Who the hell is Nate Baker? Oh, Nate Baker from Minnesota? Are you talking um yeah, Nate for, uh, did he wrestle at the U of M? Is he Randy Baker's son? Absolutely. Randy Baker was a coach, was one of the most legendary coaches in Minnesota history uh, for wrestling. And Nate Baker was his son. Oh, okay. Some Minnesota history here. Yep. Dope, dope. There you go, Minnesota. Yeah, shout out Nate Baker. Shout out Gene Delco, member for one month. Appreciate you, one of our Hotep initiate. Uh, Doug Too Deep, pause. Spot Alla Super. What's up, HJ? I haven't seen you since Hotep Con. I think they're setting us up. Uh, to choose either communism or fascism, both are totalitarian control. I think we could talk about this before we go. Um, so the powers that be, the they, right? Um, says Say no. um, you know, choosing between <laughs> somebody called him Pog Bow. <laughs> Come on, nerd. <laughs> yeah. Um, nerd is like he's king. He's he's another one. He loved the Pogs. It's you, him. Um, Unk, and um, do you follow um ZV Bear? Who's ZV Bear? Uh, you gotta follow ZV Bear, yeah. I have to. You so gotta follow. He basically trolls about you know like Fat white, white dating Chris. white women. Come on, yeah. Come on. The reason the a hey, just like how we're an anomaly, bro. The reason why why black people love fat ass white women is one. They're to me from what I've of what I've gathered a little bit more submissive, right? 
they desire you off the rip. So they're willing to like, you know, respect you or listen to you a little bit more. And it's an anomaly, right? Back in the day, back in the early 50s, you didn't see a lot of pogs. And now all the GMOs and shit that we've all been eating, they knew they 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 know what they've been doing. Okay. <laughs> they've been creating these women in the lab, literally. <laughs> Big J TV said we need bow with a black woman immediately. <laughs> oh, hear me out. Black women love me and I love them. Trust me. Like, trust me. Like, love black women. And uh, yes. Yes. Um, so, yeah, the, you know, he said they're trying to make us choose between communism and fascism. And, um, you know, if I had to respond to that, um, I don't think that's the case because fascism is a means to create any system or a mean to uh, force feed a system or, or, or um, brute force uh, a system into existing. So you can use fascism to install any system of your pleasing. In fact, you know, I think that it's probably one of the best ways to create freedom is through fascism uh, can also be a way to take away freedom. But I do believe there is uh, some communist leans um to that um uh, how would you comment on that choosing between would, making them i mean what's that go ahead now nah, them you know he's basically asking you know are they making us choose between communism and um fascism no because i think that they try to say fashion fascism is um i feel like they try to say that that is making money and being an entrepreneur and all this other shit and like the competitive marketplace, but the free market is essentially what allows everybody to do what they do. So I feel like they just try to blur the lines in all of this shit. It's like there's people who die trying to make it here because they believe in this this society of what's called freedom, which is simply a free marketplace. Like in some places, you can't be an entrepreneur. You can't see how much money you can make. So like you can't see how big you can become. And that's like in communist di dictatorship. I mean, fucking Yanmi Park has blown up over here because she escaped a communist dictatorship in North Korea and has been talking about it and writing about it. And when you hear how they live over in that, like, they can't make money. They got to worship their fucking president. You think you don't have freedom over here? We don't have to worship. We can make fun of our president. We can call him retarded. We can make memes of him falling down and, and potentially being a child fucker and sniffing kids and shit. Like, we have the freedom to do that. You do that over in North Korea, you get firing squad. And you get seven generations of that. They kill seven generations of your family if you fucking speak out against the 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 Kim Jong-un. Jing Jong un You... They, <laughs> Oh, oh, that one made me laugh. Uh, so again, bro, like communism is not good. I don't think unless you're in control. If I was a dictator, I would be communist. Yes, but um, <laughs> the free market, why would you be communist if you became dictator? Because it's just like, hey, wait, wait. You think you think what about me? You think, um, oh, you still believe that that? No, I can't say that. That would be no. <laughs> Uh, I got see. I do have a filter. I, I was about to say. I, I, I was like, does this dude have a line? <laughs> does he draw a line anyway? I did. I did there. See, I have self control. Okay. All right. Good. All right. That was good practice for the day. That's all. <laughs> I was getting worried. I was getting worried for a second. That was gonna be bad. That was gonna be bad. So I cut it. I cut that one. <laughs> self control. See. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. All right. Last topic. Then we're going to go. I'm going to um, close out the show. <laughs> um, <laughs> shut up, nerd. He said he just bodied HJ. Oh, that was, that was crazy. Um, Candace Owens. Uh, she just parted ways with uh, Daily Wire. Yep. Um, did you see that? Yeah, a lot of people on my live stream with Stu Peters last night were saying Candace Owens needs to, to team up with me and Stu Peters, but supposedly they've had beef, so I don't think that's going to happen. But, hey, you know, Candace Owens has started to speak out against, you know, some things and some people, and it's like Stu was doing that two months ago on Alex Jones. I went on Alex Jones in fucking, uh, I think it was November. He went on there in January, 
And he started call. He went viral for calling out Alex for not calling out essentially the people, you know, and Zionism and the control that they have over our entire fucking system. And now here, fucking two months later, everybody's trying to hop on the. Hey, I think these people might be controlling our fucking nation and the world, and we should probably do something about it. Like now, everybody has that sentiment because somebody had to get on the chopping block. Like he just Stu just had an article wrote about him saying that oh he opened up the floodgates for Candace Owens to essentially do what she's doing and it was you know by a bigger like media company so Stu's taking think, credit for that yeah yeah no absolutely and if you're hip to it he he probably should because he was the first person on a major platform and organization to come at someone like Alex Jones and say you won't speak out against Zionism and these people right so yeah you know where did he do that at uh he did it on Infowars yeah it was he went on Infowars and called out Alex <laughs> Bro, if you haven't seen that clip, go back um, and just type in, if you go on Bandot Video or Infowars, just type in Stu Peters, Alex Jones. It was the most viral someone's went on Alex Jones show in a minute. And I was on Alex Jones show and I'm fucking awesome. But like Stu talking about the Jews and, you know, Zionism, like he, he, a lot of people feel like he exposed Alex or... You know, but I don't know if he exposed him. I just think that Alex didn't want to touch it, which kind of makes you question some things. You know what I mean? Mm. Well, the, if if Zionists didn't, let's let's assume that's correct. That Zionists control everything, right? If they yep. didn't, wouldn't somebody else? Facts, absolutely. But and can I we think... really be mad at him? No, no, that's the point. But like, I can be mad at you if you fuck kids. I think that that's not good. I think that if you got tunnels that are leading to places um, that might have soiled mattresses on them and your fucking children, I think that that's an issue. And like, bro, if I, they, they, you know what they do to pedophiles in, in prison? Like, bro, my, my buddy fucking Chappie, roll with Chappie, roll call with Chappie. Everybody go check him out. Peter Meyerhoff. He used to be the guy at, at the Arizona Prison Center for seven years, bro. He ran the yard. He would tell me about the things that they would do in prison to, like, pedophiles, right? And it ain't good. They get points for them. They get brownie points for them because it's like they don't matter because a lot of those people had issues when they were a child or they got taken advantage of when, when they were a child and part of the thing that caused them to maybe go down the path that they did. That's why they don't respect people like that. And I, if you are in control, I can't respect pe I can't respect you. Like, I can't respect you like that. You know, my issue is... What? Um... I don't like saying something is true unless I can prove it. And I think that a lot of this stuff about Zionists uh, controlling our world cannot be proved. Or controlling America. I don't think it can be proved. My theory is that the conglomerate of Jewish people are highly nepotistic and specialize in sciences. Then they over-index in positions of power because of their Talk. proclivity towards self-education. Um, they, they run their own schools. They run their own systems. Like, I just saw something the other day about domestic violence in one of these communities. It was an Orthodox community, and women were saying how they've got to report the DV to the rabbi and the rabbi has to approve them going to the police, right? So when I think about something like that, obviously my heart goes out to all DV victims, but at the yeah. same time, I'm like, that's what's wrong with white society and black society is when there's something wrong, we go directly to the system, oh, right? Yes, facts. Instead facts. of us having some sort of counsel, right? Yes. Some leadership in the community, you know? Um, I agree. Uh, which I think is 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 valuable, but you know I just believe that you know Jews create schools and therefore they create smart people, and those smart people end up in powerful positions, well, and then they're going to look out for their own best interests. What about do you believe that the Roth? So it's you know some people would consider it common knowledge or whatever that the Rothschilds are you know a Jewish family. And we could all agree that we are in their systems of education. So, you know, Rockefeller it, systems of education. 
Yes, Rothschild, yeah. Rockefellers. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're both Rothschild family. banking system, Rockefeller e education system. Yes, and they're both still kind of Rockefeller banking system too, though. But yeah, yes, yes. And so some people would argue that that is a Jewish system, um, but it's not and, though, because okay. you have this you have this this same system existed in the Byzantine Empire with fractional reserve banking. You mm -hmm. had the Knights Templars um, running um, fractional reserve banking. In fact, um, the, the guy famously known, I wrote a book on central banking, um, which is why I have all this knowledge. Uh, There's a guy in France named John Law who was not a Jew who really took um, fractional reserve banking to the next level using um, the, the uh, Mississippi Purchase. Um, and uh, actually, it was the Mississippi company that had the Mississippi Purchase. But, um, you know, he's running basically, you know, money scams and fractional reserve banking scams. And he got ran out of France. But this is a European guy. Um, so it's not it does not have Jewish beginnings. Fair enough. So what I would ask you, if that is your argument, is then what is with Kanye West or what is with someone like I believe it was it? I don't, I don't remember. It was it Dwight Howard or whoever the fuck it was. What is it with all these people or Stu Peters or whoever coming out and saying, "Hey, there's a lot of dual citizenship in our government." What the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's so much dual citizenship. There ain't a lot of Chinese dual citizens in the in the country, but there is a lot of you know people who are you know, of this elk who are in the music industry or in the entertainment industry who are in high positions in government making decisions. Why is it that all presidents have to go to the wailing wall and wail and kiss it and French kiss it and fuck it? Why do they got to do that? Why? That doesn't make, to me, I just ask questions. I don't, I don't have any evidence to say anything either. I agree. That's why I always say hypothetical. I don't know if Jimmy Kimmel's a pedophile, but he was friends to Adam Perry Lang and Adam Perry Lang was Epstein chef. Mm. So, Hey, what, what the fuck is that? Hey, can I, Hey, Jimmy, let's just have an open conversation. I'm not trying to say you're pedo. All I'm doing, I know you're running from me. I know you don't want to talk about the Jimmy Kimmel challenge, but bro, either you fuck kids or you didn't. Either we got dual citizens in our fucking nation or we don't. Why are they there? Why mm. do you have to serve two countries? You can't serve the United States and serve another country at the same fucking time to me. I don't know how you can do that. Our border's fucking open and all these people, these illegals are running into where? Black communities and under underprivileged societies. Like we have, are we not going to acknowledge that? So you're going to take people who came from already a position where they weren't necessarily the best and then put them with other posi people in positions that aren't necessarily doing the best. And you think we're going to help all these fucking people? Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. No, inflation is going through the roof. Now these people are poorer than we've ever been. We're all poorer than we've ever been unless you got the money. And then you're all right. But if you ain't got it, if you ain't got a couple mil right now, you're not probably doing the hottest. How's fucking groceries treating you? How's gas treating you? Probably not so fucking good. So I think that it, we have to answer all these questions, bro. We just have to have the conversation to answer all these questions. I'm not making any claims, but I do make observations. I don't make claims. I make observations. And that's why I keep everything in the hypotheticals. So if you're hypothetically on the Epstein client list, fuck you. We should have a conversation with you out in the open. And I want to know, okay, whose kids were you fucking? Where'd you get them? How did you get them? What's the, what's the system that brought them to you? Who was the person that signed off on it? I think we need to have all these conversations out in the open. Fuck letting these people run anymore. Hey, why are you a dual citizen? What's, what are some of the bills that you've signed? What are some of the bills that you've passed? How much money through the bills that you've passed have gone to Israel or have gone to other things? Can we see how that money has been spent by Israel as well? Okay, let's do that. Bro, they got paper trails if you send 600 bucks to fucking someone on Cash App. So now I can't see the fucking money, the, the bill that you passed. I, we can't figure out what the fuck that money's gone when they just did a billion dollar, a couple billion dollar audit on the fucking Pentagon and billions of dollars have just somehow vanished. But if I get fucking $600 wrong on my taxes, it's fuck me. Fuck you. We're not even supposed to be paying that shit. Fuck y'all. Sorry. I just, I, this is how I get, this is how I get. And this is why 
I have no filter because the world's fucking crazy. But all we got to do is love each other. All we got to do is love each other. We won't even need money. If everybody just had a little acre and fucking grew their own food and traded with everybody, we won't be fucking sitting here, maybe be ruled over by pedophile Satanist fucks. who are fucking kids. Like, what the fuck? 600,000 children go missing every year. Stop it. Stop it. What the fuck? Who's making that money? Um. So who you got in the next election? You got Trump, Biden, None of them. None RFK. Of them. Said the fucking vaccine is safe. RFK might be funded by Israel. Like, bro, there's just so much bullshit. It's all so like you don't the fuck with none of them. That's all the illusion of choice. I don't mind the things that Trump. I still I don't mind the things that Trump has said. Some of the things that Trump has said. I don't mind some of the things that RFK has said. But at the end of the day, if you're controlled, it's all a show anyway. So who gives a fuck? They spend millions of dollars in Hollywood and Helliweird to make people believe that they are stars when they're just people reading scripts and acting pretending to be people that they're actually not. They get paid millions of dollars to pretend to be people that they're not. Oh, and there was something called MK Ultra, and it's been proven that the CIA had offices in Hollywood. So if MK Ultra is real, and it's been proven that the CIA have offices in Hollywood, then maybe all of these people in, you know, Hollywood and Helliweird and Petalwood are actually probably maybe supposed to be there to make us take our attention and put off our attention on things that don't fucking matter. Hmm. I don't give a fuck about what's happening on Netflix. They got there. We, we miss uh, 600,000 children a year, bro. I'm trying to fight to save children. I put my life on the line for this shit. I built a platform off of this shit about talking about, hey, why the fuck aren't we saving kids? If 3 million people decided to drink this instead of fucking prime, we would effectively eradicate childhood malnutrition from the globe. Why aren't we fucking talking about that? I could make actual change right now. I could make actual change right now. Oh, by a free market system, dum dums. Maybe commun maybe fucking free market systems aren't so bad. Right? Maybe they aren't so bad. Maybe making money is an okay thing. Cause right now with inflation through the roof, everybody wants to make fucking money. They want to make money. <laughs> they want to make fucking money. So it can't be a bad thing. And if we're all deciding to participate in a system that is an illusion anyways, when we don't even have to fucking pay taxes or we shouldn't have to, because we can all be fucking free citizens. Eternal Zion, all you motherfuckers who are telling people about the law and all this other shit, like, go just follow Eternal Zion and realize that you're probably a system to a slave that doesn't even give a fuck about you anyways, like Social Security, that's all bullshit, we're under maritime law. If you don't know what I'm saying, go read the, the Maxims of Law by Charles A. Wiseman. We're not even in a real society. So if we're all participating in this bullshit, then let's participate in a way that actually helps us. That's all I'm saying. Jesus Christ. Sorry, um, Jews. Uh, Sorry, Jews. <laughs> <laughs> While I still have a YouTube channel, I'd just like to say fuck King Bow. <laughs> I don't know this nigga. I'm following him. He's blocked on you on Twitter. I'm sorry. Oh, I didn't know you were on YouTube. If you told me, oh, shit, I'm sorry. That's bad. <laughs> this YouTube, video is not going to be monetized. Everything that I'm saying is hypothetical YouTube. I'm just an asshole. I'm retarded. I don't even know what I'm talking about. I have to. I condemn. He must go to the wall in Israel and pay a visit. I gotta fuck the wall. I gotta, I gotta fuck the wall. Like everybody's kissed it and French kiss. I gotta fuck it. Like I gotta redeem myself. I get it. You know what I mean? And when, when I impregnate the wall, they can suck its baby dick too. You know oh what I mean? Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, the best in the world. Yeah. Oh. Hashtag cancel King bow. Hashtag cancel <laughs> King bow. Yo. Oh, fuck. Sorry, bro. Sorry. I didn't know. YouTube. Should be on Rumble though. That's the thing. Should be. <laughs> we're on Rumble. We're on Rumble too. Okay, good. We're okay. live. We're dual streaming. We're gonna have okay. to dual stream because this might not make it past the census over on YouTube. YouTube, I condemn our Ex guest today. Yes, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I love Jews. Adam King is one of my best friends. He's the Jew of Infowars. Adam is King's he? the. Man. Yes, Adam King's the man. He's the Jew of Infowars. I fucking talk to him all the time. He knows I love Jewish. Everybody, I have, bro, I have Muslim friends, Jewish friends, gay friends, lesbian friends. Like, bro, love Do you have is... any trans friends? Stop. Why do you got to do that? <laughs> <laughs> the only reason, hear me out. Wait. wait the only reason, I don't, let's be, I'm going to be honest. Can I be, can I be honest? I mean, hey, the only reason that I don't is because, like, my gay friends think I'm beautiful. I'm not gay, bro. I just told you. I, I got fucking five kids in four years. Still yeah. out fucking women oh women listen to my music get some holy shit i'm all about getting some right so again I, gay men they just love me and i like that it's cool that they do cool he oh. didn't my butthole i get it like i'm beautiful i get it 
but like trans people like and gay people are fearless a lot of the time they'll let you know like oh man i would do all the things i would do to you bro i'm not gay why are you talking to me like that that's like a, like that's assault like i could never talk to you or a woman like that like stop talking to me like that but a trans person bro whole nother level they'll be sitting here like looking at you looking your lips <laughs> <laughs> Controlling and salivating, like they don't give a fuck, bro. If you're willing to walk out in, in the streets and look like that, you know what I mean? Like you don't give a fuck. So it comes off too sexually, where then they're looking at you and like you're in the same room and they're just, I can't. So I try to avoid them. Not that I don't like them. We all have things that we avoid. I'm not racist. I'm not sexist. I'm not transist. I, we just have things we avoid. So there's some people that see us and and at at dark times and they walk up the street. They might not be fully racist, but they got a little bit in like, okay, he's got his hood up. He's big. He's African-American. It's dark out. I don't know. Not taking my chances. You see what New York is like. Fuck out of here. So that's all I'm saying. I don't want to get, I don't want to get mugged in New York and raped by a trans man in the subway. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Can I say that? No, no you can't say that. <laughs> Son of a bitch. I tried. I tried. Fuck. Oh Holy man, shit. I'm not gonna get that I'm Fox call for at least another three weeks. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll, I'll find a way to make it up to you. Monetize it on Twitter. Just monetize it on Twitter. Put a little, little clips out. Put it behind a paywall. It'll do great. It'll do great. Oh shit. Am I canceled yet? Oh my god, ladies and gentlemen, King Bow. Oh, this a oh this a oh this a real hotel brother. Yeah. Yeah, that's real. Oh my God. Fucking what a wild roller coaster this interview was. Amen. Best in the world, bro. Next time we yeah. talk, it'll be a Rumble exclusive. I'm going to be uh, keeping an eye on your fight, your fights. And um, once I see one I could get to, best believe I'm trying to hop in the ring with you and not, the, not against you. I want to be in the entourage and. Yeah. Far, we can far. I'll fucking we'll just move around. You can punch me, it'll be fine. No, I want to walk out in the entourage. I just want to be fake famous. Well, we can be we can train too. Who gives a fuck? I love sparring. Come on, no. No, we definitely can train. I'm not worried about that. But I need to I need to be seen on TV in the ring and shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? With the with the fighters. This is one of you're my dreams. Jer I don't know why. Yeah, you're in Jersey. You're in Jersey East Coast, right? Yeah, I'm in Jersey, I got, yeah. I'll let you know. ASAP. All right, bet. Oh man. All right, man, I'm going to take uh, phone calls. And ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back after this short, brief commercial break. Envision a sanctuary where community and sustainability are the cornerstones of living. In this haven, every family is able to grow their own food, children flourish through homeschooling tailored to unlock their full potential, and education extends beyond textbooks, instilling self-worth and a deep understanding of the world around them. Here, goodwill isn't just an ideal, it's the essence of daily life, where respect for law and order harmonizes with the community's resourcefulness. This place isn't just a dream, it's a call to action for everyone who believes in a better, more connected way of living. Join us in building a future where each individual's contributions create a tapestry of enduring harmony and prosperity. Join us in Ho Tapistan. Oh, shit. Hold on. I got to bring me back. My bad. You should be able to see me. Yeah, perfect. Um, Lord Jesus. That was one hell of a ride. Not a lot. I said great interview, H. Day. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. Another classic in the books. Let's get Rudy in here. I don't know why, but I just feel like Rudy sitting on the edge of his seat to call in. So I'm like, let's get him in here. Rudy, I know you want to edge of this seat after that interview, man. What's up, bro? What the fuck are you doing, dog? <laughs> I'm going to start calling you Hotep Icarus, man, because you're flying way too close to the sun, dude. <laughs> you're flying way too close to the sun, bro. That shit was wild. First, first of all, uh, Hotep Jesus condemns everything that was just said. But Rudy the vet co signs all of that shit. Oh, man. Here we go. Rudy, 
Hey, I'm telling you, man, dude, sharp as shit, man. Dude, sharp as shit, man. And like, um, that's another one of them things. Like, I ain't on TikTok. I guess that's how he got his fame. I've seen a couple clips of him, but I can't find that motherfucker anywhere, dude. And then oh, he, he here he comes on. Yeah. Okay. Here he comes on to. Here he comes on to. I mean, I'm not the most internet savvy no, person. No, but he period. said they deleted you know, everything. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know why? Because he's flying too close to the fucking sun with the truth, man. Yeah. And I'm already cussing. You know why I'm cussing? Because there ain't no way in God's green earth this motherfucker's getting monetized, brother. It's not. It's not getting monetized. It's time. It's not. But it's, a, it's already being monetized. That's what separates you from the sheeple, bro. That's what makes you a god. That's what makes you. That's what makes you you. You know what I'm saying? That you'll platform a man like that. And I, uh, I'm 100% in co-signing everything King Bow just said, man. I'm, co- I'm co-signing everything he said. He thinks like the vet, man. You know what I'm saying? He, th- he thinks like the vet. He sits, he sits back and analyzes it. I guarantee you when the Nephilim comes in, he co-signs a lot of that shit. I guarantee you when the Nephilim comes in, he co-signs a lot of that shit. Not all of it. Cause the Nephilim is always going to be an individual thinker. He's always going to pick out what he doesn't like. And I respect that about the Nephilim. But I'm just saying, I where is he wrong? Where is, it, where is he wrong, man? Point yeah. out to me where he was absolutely so what do you think? It, so wrong. Did you know about King Bow before today or no? I've seen the, I've seen the clip. Okay. I seen the what clip. do you think? So you like around. him? You think he's solid? Is what? What's his admission I think, I application think, looking like in a hotel stand? Yeah, oh man, he's man, he, he's gonna make it through the vet valley. I'm gonna give him an you, armed you escort. Through the vet valley. I'm gonna I'm gonna give him an armed escort, man. I'm oh, gonna give him wow. an armed escort. Damn. We're gonna protect that man at all costs, man. Protect that man at all costs, man. Mm. And even if you don't agree with everything that he said, you know what I'm saying. Even if you don't agree with everything that he said. Can, can we all agree that he's got the right to say it? Right. Can we all agree that at least he has the right to say it? Man? Even if you think he's a, a lunatic, da-da-da-da, whatever. You know, they don't ban people off the Internet. You know what I'm saying? They ban Nick Fuentes because Nick Fuentes is a controlled opposition. Nick Fuentes is up there. Nick Fuentes is up there saying the most stupid shit and grifting and, gr- and having his groiper summers because – Everybody knows deep down inside, Nick Quintess is it was just chasing, saying controversial shit to chase a dollar. Mm. Now, I can't sit here and say everything the man said, but I co-sign about ninety percent of what he said, and I one hundred percent stand by his right to say it. So protect that man. But I'm changing right. your name, bro. You are no, you're no longer Hotep Jesus. You're Hotep Icarus, man. <laughs> you know the tale. You know the tale of Icarus in Greek mythology, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he flew too close to that sun, dude. His wings burned down. He, his wings burnt down, dog. Watch yeah. that sun, dog. No, nah, I, I don't have to sun, worry man. about that. I'm, I'm, I'm. Yeah, I, I don't think so. I think you're, be, I think you're, a, I think you're. Because I'm not on the side rare... of these anti-Semites. You anti-Semites. Nah, but see, I'm, he's I'm not. He's like all of y'all. We shutting down dog. all y'all bank accounts. You keep dog. fucking with me. He's I'll th- make one phone call to Rosenberg. <laughs> I'm on Rosenberg's side. I'm a fucking supremacist. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey. It goes. It goes right back to what Goldstein said on the channel months ago. The ones that are claiming, the ones that are claiming, you know, that hide behind the shield of the, the star of David, yeah. aren't the ones. You know, and I'm, like he just said, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people in Israel uh-huh. that don't want nothing to do with this goddamn war. And he's right. Yeah. And he's right. Yeah. Look at normal thing, Norman Finkelstein. They'll call him an anti-Semitic. He's a Jew who's 100 percent against the war I, I, and the treatment of the Palestinians. I got some like diehard Zionists that I know and associate with, and it's fascinating how they how they view it. Um, right. You know how they view the situation. You know, you know, you know what they are. You know what what they would be equivalent to. What's that? I know you're not going to agree with this, but in some ways, the the people of Israel who are Zionists, they're red whites. Uh, dude, half the evangelical fucking Christians in this country are Zionists. Well, well think man. about it like this, right? Because if you were to bring up the travesties done to black people. You know, whatever, whatever. You will say 
You got to get over slavery. You got to get over Jim Crow. Those times have gone, right? That would be the same argument for a a Zionist. Look, we kicked your ass a long time ago. You got to let it go. This is our land. (laughs) Listen, none of my, I mean, listen, I'm, 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 I 100% build the wall. (laughs) Build the wall. It's the same shit. I told you October 7th when we had that, you had that emergency stream, you took the phone calls. I don't care either way, bro. Yeah. I don't care. I'm not, te- I'm not team Palestine. I'm not team Israel, dude. I don't want American. I don't want my money and my government involved in that shit. Yeah. I want my money and my, our money. I don't even say my money. I say our money and our government to stop being concerned with the rest of the world and return to the Monroe Doctrine. We worry about what goes on over here and over here only. Yeah. If the fucking Europeans want to kill themselves, have at it. If, the, if they want to have world, the Chinese want to run right, wreck shot through Southeast Asia, have at it. The fucking African nations want to go to war with one another, I'm going to stand back and watch. But the minute you cross the Atlantic, a certain part of the Atlantic or a certain part of the Pacific, then it's my problem. And I'm going to give you unholy hell if you come over here fucking around. Mm. That's the way I would live, bro. That's the way I would live if I was the benevolent dictator of, of, of communism in, 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 in the Vet Valley. You know what I'm saying? I'm worried about Americans, man. America first is America first, man. You All know right. what I mean? All right. I appreciate but, you, man. Let's get hey. Ghost in here and see what he's got to say. Oh, Tevin Bill, come on, Nephilim, come on in, man. I gotta hear. I want to hear what you got to say. Everybody, stop chatting. Pay attention to the knowledge that's about to be dropped by the Nephilim. Uh, oh, Tevin Bill. Oh, Tevin Bill. Um, Ghost ain't calling. Ghost ain't calling. Uh, what we at here? Hold on, let's put this up. My 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 notifications is going wild right now. Call from Murphy's Law Rescue. Ghost Dane. What up? What's good, bro? Happy Monday. Oh man, happy Monday! Way to kick off the week. Oh my God! Listen. <laughs> what is your what is your uh POV on today's uh today's festivities, today's today's stream, today's interview with King Bao? Well, much like the interview itself, I have quite the roller coaster of takeaway. So I mean that's expected. First, I want to say this. I was listening to the first half of this. I wasn't watching it. Okay. So you thought he was white? No, no, no. Oh, okay. I knew who he was, but I had never heard him. Okay. You know what I mean? Yes. Heard him sounded like Alec Baldwin trying to sound like a nigga. (laughs) <laughs> that Minnesota accent you. is crazy. Hey, yeah. AK got like, the this same shit. Like... I'm gonna introduce him to AK because you know AK he he's running for office out there in Minnesota. I'm gonna introduce them too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. AK's out there. He got that same accent. That, same accent. It just sound like Ali Baldwin <laughs> trying to do <laughs> a nigger role. Like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, yo, you got the same low. It was wild. So when I, I was like, yeah, okay, this nigga. The only one, though, like, I could separate that from two points that was from before he drank that big-ass pitcher of juice and then after. Okay. That's how that interview went. <laughs> there was before that and then after that. And it was just like, <laughs> He drunk that juice and shit took off. <laughs> that nigga turned into Rick Flair. Listen, I'm about to couple that juice with the with the with the flow. Like, hey, take your flow, then drink this shit. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? That was the best goddamn endorsement 
he could have done for that motherfucking juice right there. Big facts. Big facts. <laughs> I was like, yo, I, this got a big bottle of red juice. What is that? <laughs> I think it was drinking that shit out of a vase. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was some, like it came out the lab. Like, <laughs> as far as his citizenship is concerned, mm -hmm. I I like that nigga. Okay, word. Uh oh. I like it. I ain't got to agree with everything he said, cause. Like, I didn't agree with, like, 90% of the shit he said right. in one particular topic. Which one? The one that's probably going to get you booted off a motherfucker. <laughs> 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 well, this stream already went overboard, so. <laughs> Fuck it. Nah, but, you know, it's like, that's the type of nigga you want around because he puts it out there. He's authentic. Mm. He's just he's himself. You know what I mean? I mean he's like fifty niggas, but he's himself and every nigga. I feel like we gotta kidnap him. We gotta kidnap King Bow. We gotta we gotta make, we gotta make him part of O Jefferson. Yeah, like, he, like can't he gotta be roll with us. He can't be wrong with nobody else. He gotta roll with us. <laughs> He can't be fucking with Stu Peters, man. Stu? I don't know what's up. Yeah, I don't know what's up. That yeah, people Stu keep Peters. saying shit about that. Nigga. I don't know. I just know that Stu Peters ain't the one. He is yeah. on the... He's on the same level as a fucking Schaefer and all the rest of the motherfucking weird niggas. Yeah. I think they do the race grift, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I would say. I would, I want to kidnap King Bobby. Hey, listen, man, I know you and Stu cool, but you and Stu can't be cool no more. <laughs> you know what I'm <laughs> and, like, gatekeep his circle and, like, brainwash him, yo. I feel like we could turn King Bob into the truth, like like the ultimate fucking Hotep samurai and shit. But he got to yeah. listen to us. Like, listen, here's the truth, Okay. <laughs> we could work with King Bao. King Bao, he's like 32. You know, I'm 10 years his senior. You, you 10 years his senior. Really, I think we could take King Bao under the wing. He might be a great protege. Yeah, I can. I'm mad. You put him and Strong Dad together. So, <laughs> <laughs> him, Strong Dad, and Cam. Oh my God. It's so. It's old. It's old. That. That right there, that's the dream team right there. That's the dream team, right? That's the dream team right there. That's at least, at the very least, that's our motherfucking front court. Can we, can we, is there any room for young Pharaoh in, in Hotepistan? Here we go. <laughs> it's Monday. It, it, the, the stream been lit. We got to keep going. What's up with, with Young Farrell's application status? Nigga. <laughs> What's up with Young Farrell, first of all? Where the fuck he been at? Anybody seen here? He on Twitch. From... He on Twitch. He's, on, he's on Twitch? Yeah, I think, listen. They, how he pull that off, first of all? <laughs> he said, fuck the black community. I'm doing gaming now. That nigga does gaming. That's it. Hold on. Um, let me see if I can find this channel. Is that? Is that? Him? No, that's not him. That's somebody big. Um. So, um. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what's up with Pharaoh. I don't know what's up with I don't know. Listen, like I said, I'm not a motherfucking unforgiving sort, right? I've been through shit. I've had chances. Everybody gets chances. I like second chances. Most instances in my life, I like 17th chances. Yeah. But... He can never fucking engage in the fucking 
in the magic of demagoguery again. If he's Twitch streaming and fucking streaming games, that's all you'll ever be able to do in Hotepistan. <laughs> if you say anything crazy, if you say anything crazy, mm. you're out. Damn. You've already proven but he's a powerful force in that realm. That is undeniable. Powerful force so he's got in the point. realm. Mm-hmm. But that's why he's already fucking, he went too far into the dark side. He can't engage in that magic anymore. He's been banned from that magic. Yeah. Oh, so so I, I, now I get that that jargon, right? Where you ban the wizard from using that type of magic. Yeah, I can understand that. Yeah. Right, right. Because it's still acknowledging that he's one of one of the wizards, right? And he understands what's going yeah. on. Out here. Um, yeah. Damn. So he's got a conditional, he's got a, he's got a yellow status. On his application. Okay. Yeah. You know, people who I would fucking just outright deny usually fall along the lines of people who just, I don't know, who like actually have a reputation of doing harm, like a clear reputation of it, mm-hmm. or people who just really piss me the fuck off. Mm. Mm. If you piss me off, there ain't no shot. Mm. Petty. I'm a very small, petty man. If you piss me off, you ain't getting there. Mm. <laughs> if, you, <clears throat> if you piss Goldstein off, you ain't getting in. Damn. That's crazy. I feel you, though. I feel you, though, because I think you're a very, you know, mild-tempered individual who, you know, not asking for much of humans. But when you just pull a whole fucking hypocrisy, like, oh, no, you done pissed me off. You done said some stupid shit. Now I got to get you. I'll tell you. Uh, there's, there's Laura Loomer ain't never getting in. Laura, Laura Loomer ain't never getting in. We can't let like Laura that. in? Can she visit Perfect for a example. day? Can she do an interview in the Hotep studio? Nah, man. She She's one of them motherfuckers. Bro, she flies under that goddamn star. <laughs> if you let her in... For even just one hour, that bitch will find a way to fucking drop a goddamn spore in the ground <laughs> or something. <laughs> Them motherfuckers can't be trusted, bro. They deal in dark, 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 dark magic. Look, this is why they all of a sudden trying to push. Crisis King is anti-Semitic. Hmm. Man, get your motherfucking ass up out of here with that shit. <laughs> Yo, Listen, it's a lot of things. Uh huh. Huh? Go ahead. I was gonna say it's a lot of it's a lot of things, and it could be anti-Semitic, but it's no more anti-Semitic than any goddamn thing else. Mm. You know what I mean? So, Christ is King. Fuck it. Anti-Semitic. Yeah. He's trying to blacklist us. A whole slogan, a whole a whole album. <laughs> you see how they, you see how they try to just ban Ye's album. That's really what that is. Exactly. That's meta banning Ye's album. That that is a that's an indirect direct attack on Ye. When I seen it, I'm like, oh, I see what they did there. That shit's crazy. I don't understand it. Listen, I'm gonna tell you right now. We're engaged in a motherfucking spiritual battle. People say that all the fucking time. It manifests itself in a lot of different forms and fashions on this goddamn plane. But one thing is for certain. Those motherfuckers that fly under that fucking star are evil. They are the root source of this shit. Like, if there's evil in the world, it came through that motherfucking faction. Mm. They brought it here. Mm. Oh, and so, listen, it ain't got nothing to do with race necessarily. Mm-hmm. It's got everything to do with what you fucking believe. Mm-hmm. That's why That's why anybody can just fucking flit under that shit. Like, just, I'm just going to fuck around under this goddamn. The goddamn star is from a fucking fire demon. I'm trying this to is, figure out if you're Stalin, Lenin, or Trotsky. <laughs> I'm getting Stalin vibes. I'm getting 
<laughs> yeah, because I'm imagining you speaking right now when Hotep is staying in the Great Hall and we're having this big meeting. It's like a hundred Hoteps in the building in the in the hall, and, and your your voice is reverberating because you that's what you sound like right now. Oh my God, I'm crying. <laughs> I don't know, man. I just know that they listen. And that ain't got nothing to do with religion. Yes, it's written in the Bible. Okay, it's the star of that fucking of Moloch. Okay, whatever, whatever. This is antiquity. This is like historical fact. This is like Smithsonian shit. The scientists will fucking tell you that. So trust the fucking science if you don't trust nothing else. These motherfuckers have worshipped a fire demon for thousands of goddamn years. A fire demon. Now, you tell me, what other motherfucking religion or way of life has existed intact, in its its intact form, since its inception, for that goddamn long? Name one of them. That's done what? Existed intact, a religious group, a religious belief. Yeah. It existed intact. From its inception, with the same structure, same organization, same belief system, same fucking mission, same goal. Name one other from antiquity. All the other ites are dead, bro. There's only one left. What do you mean the other ites is dead? All the other ites that used to kick it with the Israelites. All the other ites are gone. The Canaanites, the Jebusites, all the other ites, the Amorites. The Hittites. You know I mean? well, they claim the well, Hittites. says they, they the Hittites. Yeah, but they operate underground and in secret. Yeah. They have to move in the background. These motherfuckers take over whole nations from their inception. And I'm not talking about the But Islam Hebrew got a, got a long got a long uh They've been around for a minute, no? Islam hasn't even been around as long as Christianity. But when we're talking like the worship of those fucking Middle Eastern demons and shit, that shit's been around for like five, six thousand years, bro. <laughs> and they still fly in the same symbols from back then for the oh, same reason. Oh, 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 I see what you're saying. Do you don't think the that's continuity you don't think it was stolen? Or nah, it's 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 been I'm renamed. Sure. It's been Cause I, I'm pretty it's sure been re- that symbol, that six-sided star, I mean, six-pointed star, that's an alchemical symbol. Yeah, it is. It means a lot to a lot of different people, but right. probably the oldest known worship of that was it was the star of Moloch. Yeah. These motherfuckers yeah. were burning kids in a furnace. Yeah, shit, that's true. That's true. That that I can't argue that. That's true. Mm-hmm. And here we it, are. Mm-hmm. The continuity is crazy. There, it's given, it's <laughs> ain't no given, other religion. It's given um, given Nazi vibes. Man, yeah, that star means a lot to a lot of different people. A lot of different things. Yeah, they, had, they made yeah, it we mean. Had that, we had that star in Kemet. Yeah. But it was an alchemical star in Kemet. So that's why, you know, that, I just want to be careful with, with how we deal with that symbol because there's math in that symbol, there's science in that symbol, there's spirituality in that symbol. And, um, you know, you're making an argument that another entity is using it and weaponizing it, and that's the power of that. That's the power of the number 6666. You know, that's the breakdown of carbon. Um, carbon. You know all of this shit, um, but the six is 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 also to me. I feel like six is like a portal. It opens up a portal, and um, through it you can have like powerful manifestations. So today is a seven day. Two plus five is twenty fifth. Two plus five is seven. Right. So seven is whatever energy. Right. But six energy, six energy. I feel like that day is like it's a make or break day. It's not a, you know, today's just gonna be another day. On its on a six day, it's make or break. You you gonna have a good day or you're gonna have a bad day. And a lot of that depends on yeah. how you act. 
it, it all falls on you. Like it's, it's nothing like life is going to test you that day, but how you deal with those things, you'll be rewarded like heavily on six days. Kind of crazy. At least according to the way my planetary systems respond. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. It's got a, it's got an old, old rich history, but I don't know, man. I just know that it's not necessarily the symbol or the shit that, that, that's necessarily attached to it or anything behind it. I've always thought about it as the intent. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. So people, in, they intend a lot of shit with a lot of different symbols mm -hmm. and these, these particular people intend nothing but fucking harm with it and have for at least over 5,000 years. Know? Yeah. I don't know. And, and, because it has nothing to do with, it has nothing to do with the religion that they claim to be a part of, except for the fact that the God of that religion told them, you guys are fucking taking up the star of your new God, this demon. And so get the fuck out of here, basically. Right. But they the chosen so these people. They chose some of them are, some of them are, some of them are. Right. Mm -hmm. And to your point, to your point, as far as the star being the alchemical symbol that it is from Comet, mm -hmm. there's a verse in the Bible that backs that up. Mm. Because while you mentioned that they're the chosen people, they are not his people. Mm. There's only one people really in the Old Testament that God refers to as his people. Mm -hmm. And, and that is people? the Egyptians. The Egyptians? Yeah. There it is. Shout out to everybody that's part of Hotep Nation. If you Hotep Nation, you good. <laughs> we the chosen one. <laughs> Hotep. <laughs> He calls he, he calls Israel his inheritance in that same line. Mm. Says e Egypt, my people; Assyria, the work of my hand; and e Israel, my inheritance. Mm. All in that same line. So we see who the pecking order is. My people was the Egyptians. Mm. The inheritance was Israel. People should look into that more. All right. Let me let me get some more calls in here because I got to go today. All right, man. Hotel and Bill. Hotel and Bill. Uh, AK, call in. Let me get AK. AK's out in Minnesota, so he he might be familiar with King Bow. Bow, bow. Um, shout out to Young Pharaoh. Gone but not forgotten. Well, he's not gone, but, you know, that's what people are saying. Like, where's, where's Young Pharaoh? I'm sure he's good. I'm sure he's good. Um, I haven't spoken to him in a while, but I hope he's doing well. Call from AK. AK, what's up, yo? What up, man? What's up, yo? Man, I'm glad I was able to catch a good live one, man. Oh man, listen. <laughs> oh, one for the books, bro. It was it was a good uh good conversation overall, man. I mean, oh, I I never heard of King Bow before. Strong Dad, man. Strong Dad, I'm gonna get you next. My bad. You said what? Yo, don't you know King Bow? He from Minnesota. No, I don't. I I honestly, I never even heard his name until the stream today. I was like, who the fuck is this? What'd and then when he him? was talking. I th listen, the way I look at it is he's, he's got a lot got of that like, same accent. <laughs> yeah, probably man from the Midwest. Yeah. Um, the way I look at it is that like, he, he has a very like high IQ wide range of wisdom. My problem is that he needs some hotep tutelage yes. to dig deeper. Yeah. Right. Like, like he, he's, he's scratching and he has like a, a, a very large, uh, amount of knowledge but it's not deep enough man it's like he's almost there but he's got to break through so we can actually open up that third eye and see and, and it's just like some of the things that he was saying like I, listen he's a guest and and you know when guests are in hotep you know you you got to give them uh you know you take them at their best right you don't assume that they're coming with their worst or whatever yeah. but there was times in which you know you, you kind of pushed a little bit and he he wasn't really able to go deeper and, and you, you eased off yeah. But I think that he's he's got a great stock 
He's got the uh, the rawness that I think he could be absolutely a yeah. monster. He just needs some some uh, hotep tutelage, man. Yeah, he just need a couple of classes, man. He need a couple of classes. We gonna get him. We, see, we we gonna do. We gonna kidnap his ass. We gonna have a gym right there. You gonna train. We gonna bring your trainer up. You know what I mean? And fucking yeah. have Cabo Kamene and Shaka brainwash this nigga for a year straight, then bring him out. Like, all right, you get it yet? <laughs> there, you <go. laughs> there you go, man. That's, we gotta and that's honestly we gotta about. Throw, um, he got to do, um, he's got to do a, 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 a education on Walter, Walter E. Williams' work. People talk about yeah. soul, but I prefer Walter E. Uh, Williams' work. So not to, and that's not to take anything away from soul. That's not me like trying to throw a dig at soul. It's just that what Walter Williams was looking for in the data and and how he mixed that with anecdotal evidence to yeah. me was very intriguing. Like when he was talking about the cab problem and then he interviewed the cabbie and he had those yep. stories. Walter Williams work is very interesting. I'm sad he, he's gone. I know, man. Pour one out for one of the great ones. But uh, listen, man, the other thing I wanted to say too, this whole Christ is King thing, I just... I get it. It's grifting season and yeah. everyone's got to get out there. They got to, they got to do the grift thing. And, and I, for the most part, I sit back and I laugh to see people go so hard. And it's oh, like, it's y'all just don't, me. you don't see like that, that there's clearly a troll element to this. There's clearly like, uh, like, a you know, white nationalist, whatever to it. Cause it's, it's funny to me that someone can like pretend to be a Christian and then, like, they'll be talking crazy out the other side of their mouth. So it's almost like they're adopting an identity of Christianity that they view like some type of, like, American white Christianity as almost like um, a, a cultural, like, I, I guess, like a cultural costume versus, like, a religious belief. It's weird, man. Well, <laughs> and I can't, I can't understand it's, it's strategic. it. It's strategic. It's strategic because... Yeah. The red whites have gotten their ass whooped so bad culturally and politically and intellectually um, that they've got to uh, adopt these leftist woke, uh, woke right ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they've they gotten, see that it can got, be like lowbrow and it can yeah, it can attract the lowbrow shit. But yeah, the thing about religion is everybody knows religion is sacred, mm -hmm. and it's the one thing you should never try to. That's sort of been ingrained in humanity. Respect people's spiritual beliefs. Anything to do otherwise is probably bad. Except for, you know, the Crusades and Christianity where they said, fuck your religion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and, and what's even crazy is that when you actually look into the Crusades and you like, you know, just look at it from a historical perspective, understand the motives and what happened. Yeah. It's like they started off with this original like, oh, we're going to do this thing. And then they started to gain power. And as human history teaches all men is that when you start to gain this amount of power, you stray far away from what your original goals and principles were, unless someone can keep your ass in check. Yeah. And you know what? They got burned. So, I mean, like literally like they went through and these people were murked. To, they had to, they had to get Christianity uh, as mm -hmm. an umbrella. It's raining. And it's just like, hold up. Christianity's like, hold on. Hey, y'all, yeah. yeah, it's something wrong out here. Like it gives them a moment to like, just breathe. It's like a safe haven. It's, you know, if you ever played tag, it's base. <laughs> it's like, yeah. you can't yeah. tag yeah. me if I'm in my, you know what I mean? So, the thing is, um, there's a lot of grifting on top of it where people are just using it uh, as a means to um, sell merch, as a means to um, brand themselves, um, yep. you know, using the Christ thing. And um, I'm guilty of it, right? Because my name is Hotep fucking Jesus. Like, <laughs> nigga, you know how many times people have been at me about this shit? <laughs> you know? <laughs> So uh, but like, that's a at a certain level, I'm grifting off to the Christianity shit because yeah, when but, I but saw this that is... person call me that, yeah. I made that conscious decision. Like, bro, do you know that if you take this name, you are like half grifting off of like two different brands? And I was like, yeah, yeah. that sounds like the perfect marketing plan to me. Perfect, but but that's the thing, though, man. Like. That that's why everything in Hotep is is so much more important for people to truly understand is that, like, it's a grift, yes, yeah. but grift for the the right reasons, yeah, right? Gotta, Versus like give back and yeah, 
Yeah, man. And like, and the, the last thing that I'll say about this, like crisis King thing is like, for me, um, it's fascinating to see how many people fall mm. for the, the bait and then they get pulled into it. And I just like, honestly, man, I sit back and I laugh so hard because it's like, y'all just really don't get it. But it, it also, it's like a sorting hat, right? Mm-hmm. When I see people fall for certain grifts um, and, and like they fall in like full all in, man, it just makes me take a step back and be like, all right, like this person really, you know, they're not, they're not what I thought they were. So it just helps me kind of put things back into perspective. Cause sometimes you'll find yourself leaning a little bit too into, you know, one person's belief or, you know, what they stand for. And then you're like, ah, oh, that's right. They're grifting. That's right. <laughs> like, yeah. like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah. it's, it's a, and it's a know, good natural thing to that. You know, th- that's the thing. It's like, at some point it's like, where do you draw the line with respect and grift? Right. Like, where do you draw that line? Um, because right now the grift is nasty, bro. Like nasty. it's like, it's 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 uh, like you know with just some of the trolling like with the white identitarian stuff that whole even the black identitarian lane both sides you know it's it's also to i would say i would say the white side is more toxic cuz it's you see it more i guess um and it's become that identity like oh look yo today i seen i seen yo i got to show you this tweet from alex jones and I was like, all right, this is grifting, right? This is grifting. I ain't going to say nothing. But I'm peeping the grift, so I understand the grift. Now, let's check this out. Watch this. Where's Alex Jones' page? And then tell me what you think, right? Why is he not coming up? Is he shadow banned? I literally typed in Alex Jones. His name did not appear in the search. What are we Did doing? he just get shadow banned, bro? The fuck? Um, he should have been like, a, you know, like the auto. When you start typing in, it auto-populates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes the app be fucking up and it doesn't happen. I have to type out like the whole thing. It should, it should happen for Alex Jones. It should happen for my friends list. Like if I type in uncle, fucking uncle murder pops up. I'm like, nigga, what? I'm following uncle Hotep. I tag him in tweets. How is he not the first uncle that pops up? Like where is your, <laughs> your software at? Like this nigga got video and spaces and it's like nobody asked for that. Hold on. All right, so let me ask you a question. What type of car, while I'm looking for this, what type of car do you think is most likely to be stolen? Chat, you could join in. Most likely to be stolen? Yeah. Out of all cars? Yeah. Oh, Kia's right now. Kia's Kia's? right now. Yeah. Damn. They getting the Kia. Kia. Yeah, the Kia boys, they kind of created a brand, and then it kind of just bubbled up. And and even though they've done a bunch of, like, software patch updates, Uh it's still kind of like, okay, I can be part of like a notorious thing. You're more likely to have a story written about you if you jack a Kia <laughs> because it goes with that narrative, man. Okay. So Kia, yes, definitely sounds uh, like one of those cars um, I would expect to be stolen. Now, here we have um, Alex Jones re- quote tweeting Mario Noffa. Oh, no. <laughs> you, know, you can't quote that that's your first l right there unless it's about international like something happening over in saudi arabia that's the only time i listen mario norfo mercedes-benz new one hundred and eighty thousand dollar car amg gt 63 coupe okay and alice said if you live in a blue city and drive a car like that you're asking to be carjacked if you do drive a nice car or dress well you better carry a gun and i looked at it and i'm like <laughs> If I was a D boy or if I was jacking, you know what I mean? Is this the type of car I'm looking to jack? And I'm thinking to myself, like, joyride? You're not going to jack somebody to joyride, right? Like, you're just not going to do that. Like, you might get jacked, but the yeah. car's not going to get jacked. Like, yeah. nobody's jacking a, a $180,000 car. Because as soon as you bring it to the chop shop, they're going to kick your ass for bringing that yeah. shit. Yeah, there ain't, there ain't nothing because it's all tracked, man, all that shit. Yeah. Like, like every piece is serialized, bro. <laughs> right. So if you bring that there, they're going to kick your ass. They're going to think you to f- – they're going to whoop your ass if you bring that shit to the chop shop. So you're not carjacking that. No. <laughs> no. And, and no, the, man, and, and not at not all. And you're not carjacking this – 
because it's just too noticeable. Like, like you're just going to stand out, right? Yeah. So what they yeah, said that's, was, that's, that's true, yeah. they said some of the most stolen cars, was one of them was the Charger. They said down south, it's a pickup truck. And I'm like, yeah, there you go. Like your everyday car that you just sort of blend in. You know what I mean? So when a car gets reported, it's just like, all right, which one? Which fucking burgundy or red truck, you know? Right. So, the million of them, right? You ain't yeah. really trying to get caught, dog. Like, <laughs> you're, you're jacking it because you're either going to go and commit another crime because, like, you know, you're in someone else's car. Right. Or you're trying to rip all the shit out and take what you need. And sure, there's a small percentage of people that, that do it just to joyride and then they just trash this shit or whatever. But yeah. like you ain't you ain't jacking a Mercedes, man. Listen, you're, you're more likely to have that shit like maybe someone like kicks the shit or something, you know, or yeah. throws something at it or whatever. No, but you gonna get jacked. They're gonna see yeah, you coming yeah, yeah. out you're of gonna that get and jacked. you gonna get jacked. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna get jacked. If he just said sure. you got jacked, and I'm like, all mm-hmm. right, but carjacking that, nobody's touching that car. Like, you know, like it's just it's just it's not what what we doing. Yeah, man. Now nah, this this grift is just so let's nasty, man. Said, and, uh, let's jack the car with five hundred sensors and trackers. <laughs> right, right, right. You, know, I want to go back to something you said. You know, between the white identitarians and the black identitarians, the the thing that I see that's more nasty about the white identitarians, right? Mm-hmm. And I can say this as a man that's okay. I'm I'm half white and I'm half black, so I can see both sides. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, but here's the deal: is that the 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 toxic nature of the white identitarian that's the thing like most black identitarians are doing it from like a place of like you know this is my struggle blah 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 right it's not just to be just a nasty person whereas what i'm seeing with white and white identitarians is they just want to be nasty motherfuckers (laughs) like there's just like a, a level of just nastiness to it and that's to me what makes it different it's it's not about you know, just being proud. Like, I don't care about that type of stuff. Like if you want to be proud about what you are and what you rep different, but a lot of the white identitarian, they have to shit on someone else in order to feel good. Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the part that just gets me going, man. I'm just like, really? I I see what you're about then, man. Protocol said, uh, Oh, let me pin this. Protocol said, what is this? Gone in 60 seconds. (laughs) (laughs) Yo, that's my movie, yo. I'm going to watch that. That's my shit. It's been a minute since I watched that. I ain't watched Angelina Jolie rewatch. Yeah, she was fine in that movie. Was she in there? Word. Yeah, man. Yeah. No, that that was like the first movie that I watched. And I was like, oh, Angelina Jolie, man, she a dime. But she'd probably be like doing adrenochrome and stuff but uh because <laughs> she looks the same age dog oh, she has an age that's right nicholas cage and angelina cage Tony. man yeah man. yeah i forgot who was even in this it's nicholas cage yeah it's the cage man damn yeah i just need to rewatch this this needs to rewatch nicholas <laughs> cage is one of my favorite actors he's got another movie he got that movie face off and there's another one he got. yeah face off that's tight man that was that's super a good one. dope face off was fire though Face Off was one of my favorites. Um, I think Con Air was the other one. She had dreads in that movie. Word, word, word. Yeah, yeah, yep, 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 yep. Yeah, I got it on the screen right here. Oh, yeah, you want to know something that I saw that was hilarious on the uh, the Crisis King? I saw someone literally post all of, like, King David, King Solomon, and this whole list, and, it, and then next to it, it said, Christian, Christian, Christian. It's like, <laughs> yeah, you're going so far is that you're going to literally go through people that literally were Jewish and say that they're Christian. That don't make no damn sense to me, man. Like that, that, that logic is just so just uh, a lot of time being wasted due to brain, man. But uh, yeah, man, I'm going I'm to get off. Let someone else jump on. I know that uh, yeah, it's I think bad, Sean man. is trying to call in. All right, man. Hotep right. and Bill, bro. Hotep and Bill, bro. Oh Jesus. What a stream today. Strong Dad's next. What a stream today. Alex, man, we not jacking that car, bro. We we snatching, you know what we gonna do? We're gonna steal the InfoWars truck. You know the InfoWars truck? He got a tank or some shit. This big ass fucking Hummer. We gonna jack that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, I'm jacking your truck. Alex, can I borrow your truck? Nah, for real, can I borrow your truck? <laughs> Yo, let me borrow your truck, Alex. I just want to shoot some shit. Hello? 
call from Strong Dad. Strong Dad, what up, yo? Yo, shout out to to Nicholas Cage. Shout out to my Nick Cage fans in the chat. Yo, Nicholas worldwide, Cage worldwide, globally. First of all, my wife cannot stand the fact that I love Nicholas. I, I, really? I mean, he's. I just think that he is better than. You know, just because he does all of these movies, you know, the nigga's broke. He's got to do all this shit. But <sighs> he's good, man. He's good. <laughs> I don't know what to Why say, man. There's something about his game. Because he is. is he? He, yeah, he's. So the, the, the story behind Nick Cage, segue, quick segue, the story behind Nick Cage is that he went bankrupt a shitload of times because he, you know, used his money bad. And so he does all of these movies to pay off an insurmountable debt. That's. That's why he's in so many different movies. And it became a, such a big joke that he even has a movie where he plays himself as this, you know, uh, in this role, an exaggerated version of what he's actually going through as Nicolas Cage. It's, mm. I, just, I, just, I just think regardless of all that, he's still brilliant. He's still a, he's still a great yeah, actor. He, he, he's out of his fucking mind. I mean, to play the roles he plays the way, like when he played Face Off, I watched the movie, I'm like, yeah, this nigga's real. Yo, that's my jam, yo. Caster Troy is a badass, Castor man. Troy, Yo. yeah. Yeah. I gotta make the kids watch that. Yo, facts. Facts. Matter of fact, I'm gonna watch that when we done. <laughs> My wife, is, she said no. She said no. But anyway. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I just wanted to uh, go over the uh, application statuses of uh, uh, the person we had on today, Val, right? That's his name? Yeah. And, uh, Listen, I like to do. I like to do. I like to do. I, I feel like uh, it's kind of cool to have like a swole, dark skin version of Sneeko in in Hotep Nation, because <laughs> that's what he remind me of. Like he, that's what Sneeko talks about now. He yeah. talks about stuff like that now. That's yeah. and he says yeah. it at the same speed, with the same cadence, and the same like veracity. Like he's he, he's just a swole. Like if Sneeko actually could win fights. In the ring, yeah. he would be yeah. bow. So I, I, I approve at least you know at least from that perspective. But listen, I want to go back to Candace Owens, and I want to talk about Young Pharaoh real quick. Okay, here's the reason why we shouldn't have these people and people like them. All right, this is like a, it's like these people, they cost more to monitor than they do. That's it. We can't even utilize them for what they're good for because we yeah. gotta monitor. Yeah, correct. Yeah. It, it's it, you what, know what I'm it saying? doesn't become a strain on the resources. I feel like it's it's a massive strain on the resources. What's the point? You know, to, to say we got them, all right, we that you know, that's that's at that point it's symbolism and we're not a for me, I would do CJ I would take CJ Pearson over Candace Owens because he's younger. And what? Oh, yes, listen. No, hell. Yes. No. Oh, yes, hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. You have to hear me out. You have to hear me out. You have to hear me out. Okay? This is blasphemy. Because this because is I have blasphemy. Listen, listen. I talk the most trash about this person, all right? But from a perspective of time in the game, he has such little time in the game that he could be switched around the way that people think can Candace is too old and she's too far ahead to be used by us. But a, like a, a nigga like CJ put him in an isolation chamber for like four months and bring him out and we could turn him into our operative. He doesn't have to come into the gates, but he's a better use of resource than Candace is because Candace can't be used. She's too smart to be used, but he's not smart enough yet but he has that ability to that's the only that's, reason why that's a good take i, I that's the know, only reason that's why a, that's a good take i i won't argue that i won't argue that's a really fucking solid argument that's that's you know and i and i'm willing to defend this too because i i just i truly no, feel like to. that's yeah. a very common sense perspective that's that's a great observation you're right he could be used you're right you're right that's exactly right that's exactly right. that's a great and so when it comes to Young Pharaoh, the same thing. I would take Val over Young Pharaoh. I feel like he has that same type of power that Young Pharaoh. Young Pharaoh's cockiness, his his sureness, or whatever you, a person would call it, his yeah. confidence. 
he has the same exact, you know what I'm saying? Like that kind of confidence with the intelligence and the ability to understand a premise, move forward with something, dive into a topic, all that. That's what young Farrell has, but young Farrell is radioactive at this point. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But Bow's not. So, I, I feel but like if Bow we're gonna is radioactive ready, like he's no he yes. he's not he's not no he's radioactive. People just don't know it yet. Exactly, that's ex exactly. When people they... saw Young Pharaoh, he became radioactive publicly. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Exactly. But I think there's still still time to save King Bow from going full radioactive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree, and I think that that's. That's why he makes a better pick from that perspective. That's I feel like w whenever we're picking people, whenever we're uh, choosing top picks, we should do it the same way you do a stock. Like you're not trying to buy at the top. Mm -hmm. We should mm -hmm. choose people who are going to explode, who are, you know, just in the early stages of, uh, of exploding. People who are just about to be where we need them to be are better picks than people who have shot their shot have, you know, come against the wall, but still have a lot of momentum and fire. Those people are also, you know, they can fall down and, you know, it, it's like storming a castle. If you shoot, you know, throw a big cannon or whatever uh, from a trebuchet or whatever, like a big fireball, and it hits the wall and falls back on y'all, you're all fucked. And that's what people like that are versus, you know, someone who will ignite when they pass the wall. I <laughs> think you feel me? Yeah, this dude, computer said, um, YP needs a spot in a, in a retirement home at Hotel Stand. <laughs> Can't just throw him out. What if the powers that be get to one of y'all? Should we throw you out? He laid two. I think around. I understand that perspective. So we got that him. makes a lot of sense. We, Tom Judas said we need we need um YP in Hotel Stand. He just need to be in a retirement home. We, we can you know maybe those assets to get into foreign hands. That's true, but they still can't be inside the gates. I mean, these these are people that you have to watch at all times. You let Young Pharaoh get a hold of a book, my nigga. Let this nigga get hold of a a, a whole Tepistan Bible. We're done for. We're fucking done for. You know what I'm saying? So it's for me. I, I feel like they don't have utility outside of Hotepistan the way that they have inside as far as being an op is concerned out there you know they might be used against us but they are so far into the grift that they you know we could deflect that but if they're on the inside it's it's they could blow us up from the inside yeah yeah i think goldstein yep. said it best they could drop a spore in there <laughs> yeah that. facts <laughs> he said don't let that bitch in she could drop a spore in the earth i was like damn they... <laughs> exactly exactly have a ha, have a demon seed within the gates uh, and they, I, i'm just thinking from from a strategy perspective but yeah that's all i got today i right, appreciate you man yep seven bill, seven bill. jonah said he disagree. Yeah. That, yeah. That, that's today. Sent that text message today. Uh, Otepistan can have its own Guantanamo. Its own Guantanamo. Check out the drudge. What's happening on the drudge? Call from. Jonah, Jonah, Jonah. Yo, yo. Oh, man, you sound robotish. And I just heard you a robot. On your job. Huh? No, I'm out of fire here. Can't do it, Jonah. This nigga out in the woods. He out in the woods again, y'all. Ten days to come up with. These the headlines today? Why do I? Do people actually care about this? 10 days to come up with $175 million uh, with 170, uh, $175 million April 15th felony trial I am Christ. What the fuck is going on? They are grifting heavy over at the drudge. Why did they even throw I am Christ in there? What was the point of that? 
Call from. This grace former President Trump posted an extract from the Bible on social media comparing himself to Jesus Christ, who walked through his greatest persecution. Oh, like, trigger, trigger. Jonah. Yeah, yeah, what's good? What's good, Joe? Here. No, no, I put the headset on. Is that any better? That's much better. I've got a fire here. Yeah, what yeah. What you disagree with? Oh, uh, well, lots of things. First, stop. That guy, he's, he's a ginger, right? He's a what? Ginger, right? Who's a ginger? <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, the the, the, the guest. I was making a joke. Mm-hmm. Terrible. Terrible, Jonah. <laughs> Do better, Jonah. <laughs> Do better. Did, 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 uh, did my uh, the, um, it, or, sorry, did my Twitter uh, post just go through? Uh, hold on. I think I, uh, I think you uh, made a spelling error. No, I actually posted. Uh, I'm sitting there at the fire. I said, I just watched his grace report. Never mind. That's uh, Hotep Jesus' YouTube channel. Oh, yeah? Where we're at? Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to post it on the channel as you just said to call in, so it may not have went through yet. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Let me, let me, yeah. let me have a refresh to see what we got. You said right, right on the channel. Like right on your feed, I mean. No, on your feed. Hmm. On YouTube? <laughs> You drunk? No, 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 what you call it? On your um, Twitter. You drunk? I replied to you. Never mind. Don't worry about it. No? Uh, anyways, so let's go here, here, here. So I disagree with the fact of, uh, you know, uh, who who is the people in charge? You know, the you know Hittites. the conspiracy book is called The Elders of Zion. The Hittites. No, the book is called The Elders of Zion. Well, that too, but... The book is called The Elders of Zion, right? Yeah. Now, what people don't realize is when that they say the elders of Zion, mm-hmm. that means the rabbinical class, the priest class, and the cleric class, because it's all of the higher-ups of all religions. Oh, this, oh, this They're all doing the same the shit. That's why you get all the diddlers and all of them. Facts. So, that's where uh, he's definitely wrong. Now, let's go ahead. Since he brought up that one family, you know, first off, what what is their name mean in German? Red Shield? Yeah. Oh, they're fucking Templars. They're not Jewish. God damn, look at their coat of arms. Fuck me. Oh, oh sorry. Oh, wait, you're already not monetized, but <laughs> there's nothing on that coat of arms that says Hebrew. There's nothing on there that says they are uh, followers of El or Yahweh. It all says that they follow Nimrod, including the uh, ten stars, ten arrows in the two quadrants. It's the uh, top right and the bottom left. There's two uh, uh, two eagles holding the arrows. There's ten arrows, but there's nine heads because they're representing the nine Templars. God fucking damn it, people. The flags are in front of your face every fucking day. Mm. But anyways, so... Yeah, no, that, that's need, what the bothers me too. And then King Bow to spend a month. Everybody with you, says man. that. The, <laughs> well, everyone talks about the protocols of the elders of Zion. Yes, because Zion includes Christianity, it includes that fucking stupid chimpanzee fucking with Down syndrome who's in Buckingham Palace right now, and includes his great grandfather Muhammad. Oh, this is, oh, this is, oh, it's the elders of Zion. Oh, Oh, this is a hotel brother. Talk to him, Jonah. Talk heavy, Jonah. Even you know what? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not talking. I'm not talking down on any of the religions. I'm talking down on the people that run those fucking things and people. Uh, you know, like um, let's go ahead. Uh, if we're gonna say the Judaism or um, Christianity, uh, as far as I know, that first motherfucking commandment that was given to uh, Moses on uh, Mount Sinai. Thou shalt have no gods other than myself. Guess what? That means there's no fucking pope. That means there's no rabbi. That means you're in control with your relationship with your God. Mm. And then not one person who claims, uh, I shouldn't say not one, 
the majority of people that read the, or say they belong to any of these Christians don't actually know the text. Yeah, that's true. Now, here's something new, and I'm going to actually uh, be Hold a... Hold on, I'm going to take my apex. Go ahead. I'm going to be a man, and I say when I make mistakes. <laughs> I'm going to be a man, and, you know, when I make mistakes, I make mistakes, right? So, um, you know, I always thought that uh, the, the land of Canaan, right? The Canaanites, the land of Canaan. I'm a dumbass because, you know, uh, I don't actually read myself all the time as much as I should, uh, but I do enough. So I went back and I was doing uh, the Book of Jasher yesterday when I was going to oh, get ready for my uh, podcast here. Oh, this is, oh, going you know, Canaan oh, is one of the going in today. Go ahead. Continue. Go ahead. You going Canaan in is one of the yeah, Canaan is one of the sons of Japheth. So it's not that it has nothing to do with Cain, and I, I will admit that I've mistakenly have said that many times before. Okay. And you know, no one's ever corrected me because no one else has reached that fucking book. Like, it. <laughs> now here's the other thing too. Again, people will tell you like, oh, the Bible this, the Bible that. Well, uh, if I read my Bible, it says uh, in both the book of Joshua and the book of Samuel, they both quote the book of Jasher, yet you don't fucking find that book in the Bible. So what's the, where's it at? Oh, this is a hotel, brother. If it's, if it's book of Enoch, it's quoted in the Bible. Where's it at? Oh, this is a hotel. Jesus, Jesus quotes the book of Enoch. Where the fuck is the book of Enoch in the Bible? Oh, you got to go to Ethiopia to find that one, right? Oh, this is a hotel, brother. So, I mean... <laughs> hotel. And then, uh, you know, it, it's kind of funny because they'll say... <laughs> they, they, they tell us all, right? Uh, they always you know, have these people that are secular atheists, and they'll be like, oh, Christianity is what... Or, or not Christianity, because even then, uh, I got to disagree with AK, too, about uh, the uh, Crusades, because Crusades was about... Catholics killing Christians, real Christians. But again, too, that was right, right at the same true. time as the that's 1064 that's uh, Great Schism. That's, that's right and exact. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, you know, it's really funny because, you know, again, too, let's go back to the shirts I was po- pushing last week, or the old shirts that I made. Day equals God. And what they've done is because people started to catch on that they were using God to line y'all up to kill each other. They now put you into fucking worshiping the academia where the, you can actually worship being taught like an animal. You know, again, like it literally, they have a department of training animals and everyone like has no problem with us sending their kids to be uh, trained. Like, <laughs> Now again, too. That's why I fucks with the whole Cap Nation, right? Because you guys do the you do the homeschool, right? Yep. So. Hotepnation dot <laughs> But again, I I had to do some major points because you know, you know, if we're gonna talk about like Christianity, if we're gonna talk about Muhammad, or if we're gonna talk about any of that, right? It's people listening to the leaders of those religions that cause the wars. It's people listening to the leaders, the people that are the ones who are fucking the children. As he wants to, or maybe, maybe, maybe not, but uh, yeah, they definitely are. Uh, you know, I agree with him too. But where are those six hundred thousand? Always, oh, you know what? It's called alkaline hydrolysis, and you are actually, uh, you know, ingested them to if you drink uh, city water. Mm-hmm. But. I, I think I think I might have gone too far. I know you're already demonetized, but maybe I'm going too heavy right now. But did you get that video or no? I don't see it, dog. You ain't sent it to my DM. I'll uh, do it to your DM right now. I want I want everyone to see it just to, you know I'm living I'm living the hard life right now. You know, so it's just me chilling with the dog uh, at fireside. Hey. Besides, but right now I'm gonna say this, you know, not now nor have I ever fucked my niece, nor have I been a member of the Communist Party, but this is a fireside chat right now, and I just sent it to your, uh, I just sent it to DMs. It's uploading, but uh, <laughs> you guys are. Really, I was literally. You guys I were really watching. Demonic. I'm reporting you guys. <laughs> uh, you're doing the interview. I'm. Uh, I don't see it, yo. 
Why don't I see your DM? Hey, I'll I'll speak with Bryson all the time, man. Like I, like I, I no, it's uploading. I it's me, uploading. Let me, let me, it's uh, I'm uh, like I'm, I'm man. Play, I'm on the bush here, man. When it comes through, I'm I'm, I'm on like three G. Yeah, when I'm in Bush, through, Canada. I'm like it sucks up. Well, it sucks, but it's great. No doubt. I, yeah. I, I, Let's be there about like 15 seconds, but uh, let someone else know. Yeah. Hi, yo. Hotel type of bill? Motherfucking Jonah. This motherfucker out in the middle of the woods. Phone call on a delay. This nigga out in Afghanistan somewhere. Who knows where he at? That is crazy. He said, what is this? Gone in 60 seconds? That was crazy. Um, so we waiting on Jonah's situation. Um, looking at the drugs, they talking about Biden wants to increase corporate tax. <clears throat> Has cut taxes overall. Well, that's a good thing. If he cut taxes, that's a good thing. Biden said he would raise taxes. Da da da. da. Call from Hotel Pole, some white woman. Yo, 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 yo. Oh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How's this, uh, how's this lunar eclipse treating you? Um, Pretty is, wild. Is that what the we're wild going show right today? Now? Yeah, babe, that's what the whole fucking planet is going through right now. Oh. Everybody is feeling some type of way, and we're just dealing with it. But mm. no worries. There's another one coming up in a week and a half. Oh damn! Uh, but I'm I didn't Libra. come here. I'm to be Libra, doing... and apparently, this uh, lunar eclipse is in Libra. Yes, it's a you. It's a it's, it's a, a, me it's a your thing, people. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's so a, I'm feeling it's real good. The Libras are benefiting most. Um, <laughs> I'm, I I'm higher moon energy. You right? I co-sign you not co-signing King Bow, okay. but wholesome white woman. Cosine King Bell. Why shouldn't I cosign? Cosine. Well, baby, uh, if I was Unc, now if I was, I would say it would be a requirement for the Coonan. But I'm not Unc, so I didn't say that. It's a requirement for what? But for the, to get on Fox. Oh, Unc? To, to get on Fox? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'll be fired. <laughs> Is, you think Unc for the big leagues? No, 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 no. Okay, so let me run that back. If I was Unc talking to you about why you sh should not co-sign King Bell, I would refer back to Coonan. Oh, I'm still. I would say that it's just like a you have to publicly say nah, but we'll get you. We'll have a conversation. Oh, you're saying it, it could hurt There's the grip. It could hurt the grift, right? It could hurt yeah. the brand. It could be a child to get us not on list no more. Hmm. So it, might, it makes sense. That's why I said I support you not doing it, but I do. No, no, no. So someone put it up really well. They said, um, cancel culture gets canceled when it meets Hotep. Yeah, because if we yeah, have, once you do get there, like you, we already we canceled y'all. <laughs> He said, right. right here, he said, cancel right here, right here. Look, he says, cancel gets canceled when it tries to cancel Hotep Jesus. Hotep is the final boss. I would agree with that. You know, like I don't exist in the, in the game they play. Right. Which is why I don't have yeah, to. I'm, yeah. I'm not in their game. So uh, I don't have to yeah, play you by their rules. Yeah. You guys are weird battles doing dumb shit. Go go on, do that. I'm. We're worried about our own stuff over here. Yeah, we're yeah. To it's like it's like a play. Stand. It's like a play is happening, and people want to act like I don't know. I'm the audience. You know what I mean? Right. Yes. That. But that's what. It, so the other point I wanted to make when calling in today is most of it is nephilim shit. When I hear people talking poorly about the J people, I don't think of like Roseanne Barr. I don't think of. Uh, you know, like that, that's not the kind of J person I think of. I'm like, oh no, it's the Judas ones. It's the 40 pence of silver ones. 
Oh. That's the Nephilim shit. That's that demon spirit that's been on the earth that didn't get wiped out in the last flood. So, mm. uh, mm. and mm. the whole crisis king thing, one last bit on that. I think that it's trolling, but the woke right just don't know how to troll. They don't know how to troll? They just don't. It's too emotional, And right? the ones that do know how to, ex- yes, but the ones that do know how to troll are all caps lock schizos. Mm. So then you have decent, well-meaning people who legitimately, yeah, no, watch the blood of Jesus. Christ is king. And then you have schizo fucking weirdo just following, following along, playing into like their operation. Yeah. It's just all nonsense. Get off the freaking internet. Go stand in some grass. Plant something. It's seed planting season. I was I was like plant seeds while we were doing the show earlier. It's just do something else. Get off the fucking internet. Go read your Bible. Go read the Art of War. And then once you've read those two things, pick up Hotep Jesus' book and fucking stop paying taxes. <laughs> Great fucking message. Go. Great message. All right, proud of you. Thank you for the show. Hotep and Bill. Hotep and Bill. I was a white woman, y'all. I was a white woman. Hold on. Let me see something. Um, No, not there. I want to see something. Hold on. Um, no. This. Wow. Wow. <laughs> My subscription thing is still pending. I just realized that. This is Hold on, I'm about to show y'all something in a second. Hold on, let me see. Aha. Found it. All right. All right, so check this out, y'all. We're going to play a little game. We're going to play a little game. If you guys want to play along, it's going to cost you some money. Okay? Watch this. So today, actually, it's probably fast. Actually, not. I, I can find it. Here it is. All right, so let's go here. So today, I found this little treat little breaking news for you. Here we got a new digital ID document release. This is from the World Economic Forum. Can you see the document here? Metaverse identity, defining the self in a blended reality. What? Defining the self in a blended reality. What? Home, Homeland Security raided Diddy's house? What? Hold on, we about to go there right now. Don't you worry. Homeland Security? You lying. Let me see. I'm about to pull it up. So you see this, right? Oh, shit. Here it go. Hold on. I found it. Hold on. Damn. Shit just got real. See? See how how they do? They got the digital ID, but the same day they got the digital ID shit, look what happened. Look at this. TMZ, you know, TMZ was on the scene. Somehow they got the first scoop. Breaking news right now. We're following the Department of Homeland Security conducting a raid at a house in Holmby Field Hills, believed to be 
connected to Sean Combs, the rapper and music executive, perhaps being linked to a sex trafficking investigation. He got some shots of a few people coming out of the home. Those people have been detained. Now we're trying to still connect the dots. We do have some sources on scene here that we're getting this information from. We were actually the first ones here with about 30 different law enforcement vehicles at least. There are three Bearcats on scene here. This oh, just all unfolded, Sandra, I would say less than 10 minutes ago. We got here even before the crime scene tape came up. So uh, we're just down the hill. If you look up the street where Tony is right now to the right, you'll see one of those Bearcats and law enforcement. On the other side of those bushes, basically, is that home that is registered to Bad Boy Films, which is part of Bad Boy Entertainment. And the home in particular is registered not only to Bad Boy Films, but to one of P. Diddy's daughters. They are heavily armed and uh, they've been very tactful. Would probably be the best word to use as they uh, made entry into this home uh, this afternoon. We actually watched them as they made through their made their way through one of these uh, side gates, and as soon as they got inside the home, one of the things, the first things they did was made their way into this garage that you see is open right there. Now, they did take a couple people into custody. We witnessed that. Now, are they under arrest? Are they just being uh, asked about what they know? That I can't answer, but I can tell you there's three people right there that were taken into custody we were, were inside that home at the time of the raid. We did see a bunch of investigators going in, making the raid in there, and clearing that as well. So they're going to do a thorough search as they conduct this raid. And so far, Stu, from what I understand and from Haley on the ground there, they have not seen, and we have not seen from our vantage point, any sign of Sean Combs, the 54-year-old who is believed to be the property owner. Diddy was like, I ain't there. I ain't there. Come and get me. Did he better hop? He better hop on on something and get his ass to Thailand or something. He better be in Thailand or something. They looking for Diddy. They probably say he didn't pay his Illuminati dues. Lord have mercy. Something big is happening behind the scene. If this is a distraction of choice, man, listen. Yo, what's that? Uh, movie called Nightcrawler. I think it's called Nightcrawler. I think it's called Nightcrawler. Uh, about the kid who starts a media company. I'm like, when I watch the movie, I'm like, this feels like TMZ. You should watch it. It's a really good movie. I don't want to say too much about it because it's a really fucking good movie, and I don't want to spoil it because there's layers, there's levels, there's dimensions. If I say one thing about it, it'll just ruin those dimensions for you. He got to go hang out with Russell. Yeah, Lauren. Exactly. He's going to have to go see Russ. Big facts. Big. Um, all right, let's go back. So, World Economic Forum, Metaverse Identity, Defining the Self in a Blended Reality, inside their report, basically talking about a digital ID, how your digital ID, Metaverse, is going to become one. And uh, they talk about... um. Right here, a person's metaverse identity will be central to their day-to-day -day life. Okay, so let's pull that up. Let's copy that. Hit Control C. I'm going to go down because I linked to the article right from the uh, right from their website, right from the World Economic Forum website, and then I pasted that in. Control V. I'm down here. See? See it right there? Right there in the report. What page is it? Page four. As people spend more time exploring, playing, and socializing in digital experiences, a person's metaverse identity will be central to their day to day life as well. Uh, to their day to day life as well as to say they express their personal identity, Exp as well as to the way they express their personal identity. Sorry, the font's small. Um, so how you express yourself, how you express your identity is going to be digital. But no, 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 I'm sorry. Your digital life is going to change the way you express yourself. I said that backwards. My apologies. 
education on what it is and how to use it and how to use it safely will be transformation. From metaverse identity encompasses. Here they talk about representation, data, identification. All right, cool. So here's where we're going to play a game. Okay. So in response to that story, I published this story. Um, and somebody, hold on, let's see if we can pull it. Somebody, somebody accused me of sending Twitter my identification. I'm going to show you. Right here. He posted twice in the thread. It was weird. So this is says I make clips for Sam Tripoli and the higher side chat. And out of respect for Sam Tripoli, I did not respond publicly on Twitter because I could have roasted dude. And I said, you know, out of respect for one of my colleagues, you know, one of his consultants, you know, made a mistake. Let's just say they made a mistake. He said, Blue check says a digital ID is spooky after he gave up his ID to help build the digital person he is warning you about. Okay. This is what it, this is. He's accusing me of malicious grifting. Basically. I'm gonna read that again. Blue check says a digital ID is spooky after he gave up his ID to help build the digital prison. He is warning you about. Okay. Okay. All right. So we got that. Now we go into the actual thread and I think the one in the thread was first. He said, um, hundreds of people that make their living warning us about this all bought free speech from Elon and gave up their IDs to do it. Those freedom fighters sold out to help build the digital prison and people listen to them. How much ad, ad revenue is worth selling humanity out for? Right. This is this is this is his his critique of me. So to recap, that you know, I'm making my living off of, of uh, Elon's free speech app. Um, but it, he's saying it as if Elon pays me, like that little creator program. We all know who Elon's buddies are. That's not. Act like I'm one of them. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not in Elon's camp. Okay. Um. He says here gave up their IDs to do it. I'm going to come back to that. I'm going to come back to that. And that's central to the game we're about to play. Gave up their IDs. Um. And he said he mentions here ad revenue. Y'all know I don't get no ad revenue. You seen the y- y'all seen the motherfucking <laughs> interview we did today. You think I'm getting ad revenue off that bitch? <laughs> and I'm damn sure not seeing no ad revenue. That's not how I monetize. I monetize by putting out. I'm a fucking author. Put some fucking respect on my name. First of all, put some fucking name on my respect. I'm a fucking three time author. I wrote one of the greatest pieces of greatest bodies of work on central banking in the history of mankind. You put some, some fucking respect on my brand. Okay. I don't make money off of ad revenue. If you went and looked through my books and see how much money I made off of ad revenue, it's like nothing, (laughs) nothing. (laughs) It can't fucking, it can't feed a family for a month. It can't feed a family for a week. <laughs> you might could feed a person for one person for one day off of my ad revenue for a week. You can feed one person for one day for one. If that, I mean, like if I make five bucks, a five bucks would be high for me in a week, probably. So that's just wow. So I'm not an ad revenue guy. So don't say I'm an ad revenue. I don't make no ad revenue. I think my last um, ad revenue was um, um, thirty four dollars, right? Uh, but I was my my brain. So so 
why 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 did I verify? I verified because I wanted the longer video upload and the longer tweet so you could do longer tweets but I, I didn't want my videos cut off at two minutes 20 seconds that's the real reason why i got this shit they keep hitting me for the premium blah 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 blah, blah. okay um so wait what your account is basically suppressed unless you have that unless you got the state approved talk true exactly exactly um so, um, you know, he says here how much, you know, worth selling humanity out. And, um, you know, I, I don't, I think this is an unfair analysis of me. Um, but I do want to come back to something. He said, uh, this gentleman, he accused me of, um, sending Elon my ID. Now, if we hit the goal, if we hit the goal, we're 20, 20 bucks away from the goal. If we hit the goal, I'll show you my back end. I'll show you right now. I'll click to the screen and I'll show you. And it'll, it'll show you if Hotep Jesus sent his ID to Twitter. But we got to hit our goal. We hit our goal. I'll show you right now. Oh, we just hit our goal. Shout out to Kelson. Oh, this is, oh, this is a real Hotep brother. All right. All right. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all want to see it? Pause. Pause, by the way. Drum roll, please. Let's go to the tape. So here we have our back end. This is my account. This is Hotep Jesus. So you can see that's my image down there. Hotep Jesus, my back end. Under security, it says here 2FA. I'm not going to click on that because I don't need you knowing about my 2FA. And here it says I ID verification. Do y'all see that? ID verification. See that? So let's click on that. Bow. And what does it take me to? This screen for me to verify my ID. ID verification. Verify your account by providing a government-issued ID. This usually takes about five minutes. What you will need. Hmm? And then hit the start button. It's going to take me through the process. Come again? about Hotep Jesus <laughs> sent Elon his ID. I didn't even know that was a thing. I saw y'all talking about this shit. Oh, you need an ID to have a boo thing. I'm like, you do? When did that change? I never saw that change. I saw y'all talk about it. I saw the stories go out to the media. I didn't have that problem. So... I don't know why cats come for me. Actually, I know why they do. But he got the wrong guy. He got the wrong guy. You know? Blue Check says digital ID is spooky after he gave up his ID to build the digital person he is warning you about. The digital prison he is warning you about. No, 2FA is very important. You should, you should always do 2FA. If it's an important account to you, you should always do 2FA. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is a real hotel brother. Like Lauren, like, come on, yo. And this is Sam's people's. And that's why I was like, you know, I don't want to, because you know, when you tweet, a lot of people get to see shit and I ain't want, you know how your followers go in the thread and they be da dogpiling them like, oh, you stupid, blah, blah. Then he got to go delete the tweet. You know, I don't want to do all of that, but. I just had to show you, like, I'm the only nigga covering this shit. And it'll be, it'll be your own people's. It'll be your own people's. I just worked with Sam. I just did a show with Sam. Like, we got to relax. Like, unless you know somebody brand, 
Don't come for their neck. Don't come for their neck. Yeah, yeah, you definitely want to do 2FA. I see the chat talking about 2FA. I don't know. And he follows me. And that's the other thing. I don't get why people who follow me. Sometimes I'm like, what? Like, I follow a lot of people, and I know nothing about their brands, right? But because I know nothing about their brands, I never come out my face sideways talking shit about them because I don't know their brands. So I bring them on the show, like King Bow. Like, we just started following each other. Somebody was like, yo, you should bring them on the show. I checked out his shit. I'm like, all right, let's do it, all right? So I brought King Bow on. Got to know him. I'm like, oh, okay, I understand his brand. I understand, you know, somewhat of who he is. So why come for somebody and you don't know their brand? I always tell people this. I always say, if you never watch the Griff Report, you'll never get me. You'll never get me. You know what I mean? I'm just a, I'm just a, uh, I'm just a, a very conscious soul. That's all I am. I'm, I'm hyper aware of this environment that we live in, and I enjoy studying. That's all. That's all. And and I'm and 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 I'm selfless, and. And I have um, great people I work with. And we just mind our business. We're not out here. I'm not competing with y'all. I'm not competing with the grifters. I care about how many views and files you are, how great your career is. Because I'm not worried about that. You know why? You know why I'm not worried about that? You know why I'm not worried about that? Because 10 years from now, these names that you speak of, you won't know them. You know who you will know? Hotep Jesus? <laughs> you know what else you gonna know? Hotep. They gonna remember that. They gonna remember that. They gonna remember the Hoteps was here. Big powerful thing. Pause. Um... Yeah, the, the the I would I would definitely check out this this metaverse report, man. This this metaverse, uh, I have not gotten a chance to uh, dive into it. It's only forty eight pages. Um, so I'm gonna take a few minutes right now. Um, and find something to look at, and then and then I'll I'll leave after that. I want to find see if we can find something interesting. Um. Ooh. All right. I think I want to click on new form factors of digital ID. That's probably going to be very interesting. Uh, and I want to click on know your customer in the metaverse. All right. Let's click on 3.3. New form factors of digital ID. Okay. Here we are. As the metaverse expands, it will build on existing digital ID framework and it will raise net new compelling questions and areas to explore. New inferred database credentials, new digital asset avatar-based credentials, new presentation format. What? For instance, a dragon avatar may only gain access to a fantasy realm if it meets certain criteria like having specific scales or another unique token, thus adding a gating layer. Questions remain. Oh, I see what the fuck is going on here. All right, y'all gotta film me on this one. This is this is one of my more more wild takes. This is definitely in the David Icke realm. Y'all gotta hold on and, and bear with me here for a moment. It's what they trying to do. They trying to make it so that in the metaverse, seeing lizards and dragons and shit, basically lizards. is going to become common. So when you, so, so now they don't have to hide themselves anymore. That's what this shit is about. They are tired of hiding. They want to come out. 
That's why they're talking about avatars and, and lizards and shit. This is insane. They literally told you. And that's where Jonah and everybody else are on. They keep talking about Jews and they keep talking about Templars. They don't realize, man, it's lizards. Hotep, you're a genius. <laughs> Hotepjesus.com. <laughs> it's a it's an alien lizard race. <laughs> and they be wearing our skin. You seen you seen men in black, right? <laughs> I, I, <laughs> digital representations could carry credentials. Wow. Interesting. Paired with uh, authenticity checks, a digital asset or avatar's distinctive, distinctive attributes, whether design, presentation, or behavior may emerge as a new digital signature. However, questions remain. Well, that's like in LA, right? Some clubs, if you walk up and you're not, dress fresh to death you can't get in right your avatar doesn't pass the credentials doesn't have the appropriate credentials it's very much like mimicking real life for example the metaverse enables dynamic verification through real time and inferred data for example an individual's behavior is paired with facial scanning can be used as ongoing age estimation or behavioral credentials behavioral credentials Whoa, whoa, hold up, hold the fuck up, yo, <laughs> yo, am I the only one that sees the problem here? Effectively making verification ongoing authentication process based on individual user conduct. Y'all done read too much. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. This shit gone. Listen, I'm going to catch y'all here tomorrow. Y'all go read up on that document. I'm Hotep Jesus. Thank you for tuning in. Shout out to all my, um, all my cash appers. Shout out to all my supers, all my mods in the chat. I appreciate you, all my callers. Appreciate you. Love. I'm humbled by your presence. I will see you again tomorrow, 2 p.m. for the Griff Report. As always, be well, stay merry, tell somebody in your family that you love them. And as always, Hotep and Bill. Envision a sanctuary where community and sustainability are the cornerstones of living. In this haven, every family is able to grow their own food, children flourish through homeschooling tailored to unlock their full potential, and education extends beyond textbooks, instilling self-worth and a deep understanding of the world around them. Here, goodwill isn't just an ideal, it's the essence of daily life, where respect for law and order harmonizes with the community's resourcefulness. This place isn't just a dream, it's a call to action for everyone who believes in a better, more connected way of living. Join us in building a future where each individual's contributions create a tapestry of enduring harmony and prosperity. Join us in Ho Tapistan, 